Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the fourth week of the EGFC Season 1. Throughout the season, of course, we have a very unique crew battle format. Each of the teams will have five players, and each will work their way through five best of threes. Each individual victory will earn their team at two points, and the players started a little bit early there, so we'll get into the background. Just have that in as I continue just explaining the rules. As <laughs> they battle it out, we will be able to get points. So for each game that they have stocks left, they will earn a point per stock, and each best of three they win, they will get two points for their team. The team with the most points throughout the night will be the winner. Beautiful um, explanation. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it just works. My name is Upmind. Navic. Cam My name. Or, or, yeah. Cam no, you Navic. Yeah, there you go. Either you one go. works. Yeah, but yeah, no, glad to be here as we already start our day off with Aiden versus DLS. Aiden, AK Bibers. Already starting off, and we already have a late stock with the nest already being stuck off stage, trying to make his way back up, being back, and ooh, that's already going to be the first kill there for Sienna College. Yeah, that first stock. I mean, me Swordfighter seems to be what Sienna opens with every single time, and I actually think that might be because. Actually, I'm not sure why, but we do always see Bivers <laughs> opening up. Well, no, I was going to say I know Niagara has a player, and I think it might be DLS who's currently on their lunch break from work. Came in to do his match, and then he's to go back to work, right? And for a oh, second, I got, okay. two, I got the two teams confused and was wondering okay. if mayhaps it was mayhaps. Sienna's Bivers that was the player on the break. Oh, okay. Okay, I understand. Yeah, no, that's usually how collegiate teams are. I can tell you from first-hand experience that sometimes if I do have a break in between classes or anything of the sort... I will literally go play or do some sort of collegiate obligation. So I don't blame DLS for potentially coming in for a short shift of three or four minutes, depending how many stocks he can take. But for now, he's certainly getting, you know, hit up a little bit. Already at 60% on his second stock. Ooh, Bivers, already doing an amazing job. Great interaction, great movement. Are you kind of stacking up the damage and keeping the distance beautiful against the Ness, who hasn't exactly been able to get any of those reflects that he's been able or trying to line up? Yeah, and I think that's the other thing, right? Ness versus me, Swordfire is definitely interesting. Or Ness obviously setting up some great combo potential with the PK Fire, but uh, I don't know if we've seen it yet. I think we've seen the deflector being uh -oh. used, but oh, almost catching off the LS there. Right, a lot of back and forth. Back into that neutral game. Nobody's got their advantage state. Just kind of pacing it out, trying to find an opening. Lechakram's going to be thrown out. Of course, a variety. Good grab here. Can they keep him off stage? You know, oh! He's going to get the big hit there. Managing to find the stock up mind. Yeah, that was pretty good. I didn't even realize what his intentions was because he throws out the ring off stage and then he just up these back and then he realized that he was just in prime position to connect the last few hits of that up to end up getting the kill. So now a full three stock lead here and oh no, but a back throw will do it though. A one stock lead instead, at least getting some sort of consolation for Niagara. A bit of a cheeky taunt there coming out from DLS as he managed Still, to get that back. Just a little bit. Said. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just got to throw it out. You're waiting for time. It was the long kill animation. So, you know, I don't blame him. <laughs> Throwing the chakram out. Of course, you can adjust which way you throw it. You can adjust the speed. You can tilt it. I mean, the chakram such a versatile Ooh. move. And oh, that was a good read coming out from Bivers. Not only that, but a cheeky taunt in the middle too, as you mentioned. <laughs> oh, okay. Pulls out the tornado. Can't exactly execute those. A PK fire. Well-timed one. Bro. Takes him out of the fray. And here yeah, comes the PK sight. flash. The upbeat goes right into it. And... Oh, the PK oh, thunder. No. They're just missing DLS each time he's looking for... Oh, no, that's... Connect. Oh, wait. That was almost so good if he had a grab there. If he had reacted, yeah. it re it reacted slightly, slightly faster there. He had a free grab onto Bivers that might have been able to give him the edge. Good parry coming out. That's one parry. Oh, no, and he just falls into the upper. That is going to be match one. Going towards Bivers, earning two points for his team. Oh, there you go. Yeah, floaties against Sword Fighter. Not exactly the the best sort of uh, matchup for him because you know uh, me, Sword Fighter, kind of acts as a little bit of a homing missile midair, and if you give him a little bit more time to set up his projectiles and his wide range of aerial moves, his up B, his up air, and whatnot, he'll definitely take that advantage every time that he can. And I mean, so far we we kind of see that theory in action. Bivers, as you mentioned. Two points on the board for him as now DLS 
has a little bit of a conundrum for himself because it doesn't seem like he was winning out too many interactions almost the entire time. We're going to Final Destination, picked, obviously, by Niagara. So, mm -hmm. I like Final Destination. I'm intrigued into this matchup, though, because that's the Ness player taking me sword fighter i guess getting rid of the ladders there's not much ness can do with ladders as far as i'm aware or uh, platforms right yes platforms and ah uh, it's also a weird one it also makes it a little bit tougher for the nest to land too and that's kind of what we saw dls having some trouble with he couldn't exactly land in the right positions either those up bees kind of landing right in front of uh sienna's own bivers there so i don't really know what advantage state DLS will put himself with it, but one thing that we really didn't see in that game one was too many offstage interactions uh, with DLS being the one in advantage. So really, FD should realistically help him out, but for now, it's just the oppression Bivis from Bivers the perfect winning stock. out the game. Is he gonna and he might it? just Hits find the it. Chakram on that. There's going to force Ness off Ooh. the edge here. The pressure's going to be coming out. Using that Chakram, dodges back. The slow Chakram's going to find it. it. That's going to be a perfect stop coming out. Can Bivers keep it up? We've already seen a uh, one of those wonderful three stock perfects coming out before. And Bivers yeah, is going to make it happen a second time here. The Nader's going to come oh, out, no. gets the catch, finds him again with the up air, keeping the pacing here. Super good positioning coming out from Bivers. Oh. The baseball bat hits the tornado, though, and that's going to end Bivers' perfect streak. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that the damage is still stopping, though. We still see DLS trying to make his way back on stage. Great job covering the ledge with the ring, but now it seems like the Ness taking a little bit more advantage of the fact that he's just on FD, not letting DLS, or not letting DLS, not letting uh, Bivers land at all, stop. but... Would you he, look at that? And, and, and this is, I, I think this is why I don't like Final Destination in this scenario, right? Because it, it is a slightly smaller map when you actually think about the Smash Zones. And Bivis is able to combo so well without any platforms. I'm incredibly surprised seeing the performance coming out of his Swordfire at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. But, ooh, that PK Flash could have done bits for him as that up B. It takes forever to actually connect onto ledge. But, unfortunately, the Flash was a little bit off its mark in terms of trajectory. And we could get even more of an extension on the lead. Oh, the dash attack. Saving, uh, saving himself from a little bit of embarrassment oh, there, but it, tried to get the it, style it there. The three stock. Three stock in. And the up B actually almost killing Bivers there. So a uh, little bit of a potential for a point deficit, but you were about to say, buddy, lots of points on the board. Yeah, that is an incredible start of points, right? You can get eight points per best of three. So there was a one point from being a perfect score. And coming out into game two, if we see Sienna taking another win, then it starts to become very, very difficult for Niagara to bring it back. But, of course, we will play out every single match because point and stock deficit does matter when it comes to breaking ties. As all of the schools are playing for the playoffs uh, to determine their seeding. So none of the schools are going to get eliminated throughout the regular season, which we still right. have another five weeks of upbind. Yeah, lots of action to go. And uh, not only that, but... I mean, you do mention that we have five weeks uh, on the board, and also there are a couple of teams who, if I'm not mistaken, haven't even played a game yet. Yeah, unfortunately, we've been having a slight scheduling issue and things like that. Uh, difficulties that come up, you know, bureaucracy and all of those things. Uh, <laughs> right, of course. And, I yeah, think I'm... RAT is the, is the team without, a, without even playing a game yet. Rhode Island Institution of Technology. Uh, Just no, not yet. Rochester. RIT really? is Rochester's Institute of Technology. That is correct. Uh, I got you. Okay, understandable. Yeah. I apologize. Then... I apologize. You know my region more. Wow, you know my region more than I do. I'm the Brit I get knows your region more. You should really start a question to things at that point. Look, man. We are seeing pigs and bands coming out, <laughs> and we are seeing Smashville being banned, <laughs> followed by Battlefield and Final Destination. That's going, uh, that doesn't leave much open. We're going to Pokemon Stadium 2 as we move into game number 2. What, are, what do you think of this matchup that we're coming out, right? We, of course, see Rory coming out from Sienna playing against Fiction. We saw Fiction play last time, for, or last week for the first time for Niagara. And I believe he got two O's? Yes, he did. It was relatively close. Game 2 came down to a last stock, but game 1 was a two-stock warm. 
But uh, but yeah, Fiction definitely looking for kind of a bounce back for himself. But, but Rory is Rory, my friend. He's had quite Wait, quite the success. Did you just see the uh, matchup? Did you uh, just see the matchup? We have got uh, two Bowser mates playing up against let's each other. Go? It is Bowser Central. The Cooper Kingdom is coming out here. Yes, Pokemon okay. Stadium. So uh, this po is this doesn't happen very often, up mind. No, absolutely not. And it's the battle of red versus blue too. This is amazing. Yeah, no, I mean, this is a, this is the first time that we've seen a ditto on stream, and oh my god. Prepare for a plethora of upbeats, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I gotta say. And uh, the aerial game is gonna be very, very important here. The multi-hits are gonna come into play, and look at that, the uppy can't even come by, as look at this, trying to use his armor to get through, uh, trying to get through the flamethrower, but doesn't work out. 116% so far on Niagara. On Niagara's fiction here, and dude, Bowser versus Bowser, such a such an interesting and weird matchup, right? Because like like you were right. pointing out earlier, right? Fire Breath is a great move. There's going to be down B, managing to find that. But I was going to get into the point of Fire Breath is a decent move around Whirling Fortress. Obviously, Bowser's recovery. I'm gonna start throwing out the names again up mine because I know you love it when I do that. Uh, I know. I, I call you the human the encyclopedia for a reason. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting. Of course, like you mentioned, we're going to see plenty of Bowser bombs, uh, which, again, we just saw another one occur there. And then oh the up smash is going to find the connecting. That's going to be another stock off of Niagara, followed up by the Bowser bomb. And what a fun name. Bowser bomb is a great name, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> It's, it's always fun to say. There's the fire breath. Coming in, the Wally Fortress is going to catch the ledge. There's an opportunity for Sienna to try in three stops. This is an opportunity for Rory to prove himself to his team here against Fiction. Might just be that because, oh my god, everything that Fiction tries to throw out right here onto Rory, it's just not working out. Lots of great predictions so far. Great reads off of rolls. And look, there's another Bowser Bomb. It's going to actually hit on the stage instead. Waiting for a landing. Trying to get the hard read on the up smash. But it's going to be an SD there from Fiction. And Rory starts off real strong. A three-stock win in the Bowser Ditto. Yeah, that puts Sienna up to 10 points versus Niagara's no points on the board at the moment. 10 to nil. Oh, I mean, Lord. I'm going to be honest. The first mirror match we saw... I believe was week one, but it might have actually been in the Invitational before season one. Was ah. a Pac-Man mirror match, and oh yeah, was, that was preseason. The, it was the greatest thing I have ever seen. But th this is uh, this is topping it. There's there's a lot to there's a lot of nuance when you have two Pac-Mans throwing fruit at each other. Oh my god! And the oh the picks and bands just came in, and this is going to be so interesting. If we actually do get the same characters. Yoshi's story is probably the jankiest map for these Bowsers because you mentioned before that Bowser bomb, that's going to hit at a completely different trajectory. That's going to hit more at a diagonal and it's going to hit more towards the blast zone. And that might throw off uh, one of these players real soon. And we've seen uh, just recently, you know, Rory, a strong affiliation with that Bowser bomb. And oh my God, we're still going to get the ditto. Oh, this is amazing. We love a good ditto, but when it's a Bowser ditto, I think the only heavy ditto I want to see more is DDD versus DDD. But the chance of that one happening is, uh, I mean, no. I said, I'd say near to impossible, but I also said would have said that about the Bowser matchup, but we haven't got any DDD players, so quite literally is. Right, right. Now, coming out, good pressure coming out oh, no. already. I mean, it's one of those things where it just literally comes down to player skill, right? That That's, that's a mirror matchup. Yeah, that that it that almost literally is what a ditto is all about. You, you, it's it's knowing the individual skill of the character more than your opposition and how to play against the same character. Knowing your mirror mid matchup is just oh as important God. as knowing any other matchup. As that Bowser bomb is going to take the first stock. Rory taking the lead. Yeah, Yoshi Story famously having one of the uh, the smallest kind of kind of roofs in uh, in all of the maps. And of course, especially that, in comparison to the platform. And I was going to say, of course, with that Bowser bomb, obviously on the platforms, it's even easier to occur. And what did that kill at? Like seventy percent, eighty percent on a Bowser? No, it was. It, no, it was pretty late. It was pretty late, but certainly did help that it hit on the platform. If it hit on the ground, it certainly wouldn't have killed. And here we go again. Down there, connecting. Oh, and yet another one. And this is a problem with Yoshi Story for these Bowsers. 
that okay. top platform, because of the fact that that down air actually begins a little bit above Ooh. where you initially input it, it's going to be good. a little bit of a problem because you get stuck on there, but enough to finish it off. A bit of a blunder coming out there from uh, Rory, but we did see Fiction punishing him for it and managing to find a stock. Rory <laughs> answering back with that Bowser Bomb on the platform again. I mean, this is like a dream for a Bowser Mirror match, I think. I think Yoshi's story, this this is the perfect storm, right? It's the weirdest matchup mm -hmm. you'll ever get, but it's so good. Right. I, I would like to argue, because myself, I do have a little bit of Bowser experience. This is one of my more uh, frustrating maps to say the very least, but also one that, you know, it's a double-edged sword in a sense. It, it, it both helps, but it also goes heavily against you purely because of that top platform and the slants on the side. But again, we see here Rory taking so much advantage of every oh little goodness. single movement that Fiction has been trying to pull off and the upbeat landing up. He's gonna use that down tilt to cover it. Oh, and the up smash off of the get up attack. And that's gonna be a two stock to finish it off. Multiple points already on the board for Sienna. Yeah, I mean, that is... What, that's Sienna up to 14 points? 14 points! Already. Off of two games! That, yeah, that, that's an incredible lead for Sienna. And we're already going on to game three. These are going by so quickly at the moment. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have Jason, a.k.a. Alas. The, uh, Alas, he has arrived. Uh, playing against Niagara's Flubber. I'm I'm concerned for Niagara at the moment. What what do you what do you do in this situation? Because your your roster's locked in, right? You're just hoping mm -hmm. that you, you've kind of planned it out properly, or you have the tech to to pull it out, right? Right. I mean, I would assume in a sense, and I don't know. Just kind of just kind of looking at you know prior performances from Niagara, we didn't see Flubber take away a game last week uh, against a player from Manhattan. And also last week, we saw Alas also lose out. So we're actually looking at two players potentially at around the same skill level. In comparison to our first two games that were, you know, kind of blowouts, this one might be our most contested one yet, Navik. I mean, you know, I always like seeing a closer match overall. And I'm trying to remember both of these players' results in the Invitational as well, because they both were mm -hmm. playing... Uh, I believe way back in week one, we're talking like back in 2019. Um, <laughs> I think November of 2019. I'm pretty sure Jason beat Randomane because that was the first game of the season. Uh, and then on the side of Niagara, I think Flubber lost to Show, who was the team captain of St. Peter's. And then mm. I do not remember any of the any more weeks after that. I think Jason played again against Little Taze. It could have been five point though, but I'm pretty sure Jason won that as well. Okay. So Jason was winning a good amount. I'm trying to think if Flubber managed to find anything throughout it. Uh, I can. I actually have the sheet somewhere. If I can go quickly find that before the match starts, I can actually get an answer for that one. From the Invitational? Indeed. Oh, but we're okay. going to get in the match. And we have a, another mirror oh match. Oh my god. Uh, of sorts. We, we have it's a little bit of an alternate. Young Link versus Breath of the Wild Link. Or Adult Link. Or just Link. Whichever Link you want to refer to as Link. <laughs> link v link we got a link the youngest time. of links and the big boy link yeah. <laughs> on your left <laughs> yeah this one's interesting yeah i mean this this there again this is one of those other mirror matchups where it's not exactly a mirror it's more of like an echo matchup i'd say there's a bit more intricacy than them just being echo fighters but you know oh my goodness oh but already no. just like that I, I, you're saying Jason won a lot back in the Invitational. I'm double checking everything now, and it looks like I was correct. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that is a concerning factor for Flubber at the moment, who I still don't think we've seen win a set. No, uh, we've only seen Niagara only play a single uh, set so far, uh, or a single crew battle, and Flubber ended up not winning his. Oh, but uh, but Jason, however, has played two, and is uh, he's currently one and one. So Jason here, putting in the work. I mean, I think in this matchup, I think I favor Young Link. Like, yes, you, you got you got old Link. He's got so much potential, right? I, we were joking about that a few streams ago. Uh, how I believe it was me and Door, and Door was talking about how he despises the word potential. 
because everybody says that old link has potential but uh, it never works out you know you never see it happen whereas young link tried and proven character very efficient bombs are good good tech if you're good with your timing or if people roll into your bombs then you're having a great time good parry into the up smash as oh well. my a great response too and i'm actually surprised that that up air didn't end up killing 140 percent grabbing his bomb off of the shield this one's about to end up into a kill as you just kind of see here jason kind of rolling through all of the oppression from flubber so far finally a back throw coming into play that grenade not exactly too great of course does more damage but it's a little bit more work to actually connect in comparison to young links of course and of course, looking at the score, right, this is a super important match for Flubber because Flubber right. needs to be able to remove some stocks, at least stop the hemorrhaging of points at the moment, right? Because if they get, if Sienna oh. gets another three points, it's going to be borderline impossible unless Flubber takes a match. Because if they go over, uh, they go over 16, I believe, right? Because 8-8 eight, eight on this next round, they could tie it up. So if they go over 16, then Niagara mm -hmm. physically cannot bring it back. Right, and for for kind of context for you, Sienna was only able to post 13 points last week in a 13 to 15 loss to Marist. So at this point, Sienna has already superseded their point, uh, their scoring last week. And uh, again, Niagara, uh, wow! At last week, they were only able to post. Listen to this: a single point over Manhattan. Yeah, Manhattan, of course, being a very strong school to be playing against as well. They've proven themselves multiple times. But that is the thing I was going to talk about, right? Is It's, it's interesting. Uh, the scoring system is, is, of course, a little unfamiliar. It's a bit odd, right? Each round, right. Count, each, each stock in an individual game counting for a point, and each player winning their best of three counting as two points. So it, it adds a really interesting dynamic in the sense of on a close game, you can really bring it back. But this needs to be a case of we need to be seeing Flubber at least take one round with, like, two stocks. Even a one stock would be a massive statistical improvement for Niagara to try and bring this back in the next two games. Potentially, but he tried to use the bomb to survive there, but he unfortunately DIs away from it, and that's going to be, unfortunately, the SD there. That's going to be the young link. That's going to be Jason winning out the game, and yeah, no, just to kind of explain the scoring a little bit more, you mentioned how, you know, the stocks do matter, but they matter in the case that if you actually do end up winning the game. So if you win the game by a stock or two stocks, that's two points for you on the board, regardless of uh, what, how many stocks your opponent takes from you. So just in this uh, best of three alone, Jason currently, or alas, currently has a 2-0 lead over Flubber. Just to kind of explain it a little bit more. So, yeah, like you said, it only matters if the last person standing has stocks. It doesn't matter if you right. take stocks. If your opponent's on one stock, you don't get points for their stocks. They get one point. You've reduced their total gain. But we're getting into the next game, ladies and gentlemen, here. This is already game three. Yeah, not only game three, but we're already deep into it. This is game two, game three. We're just going right through the scoreboard and... Again, if Flubber somehow can't take this one away, this will unfortunately be it for Niagara University, I would like to think, unless we see Aust 117 or Mr. Paytonator kind of pull off a, a miracle 14 to 18 point uh, rally here. I don't think we're going to be seeing too much of a hope for Niagara going forward. So Flubber, look for a huge performance here. It's a little bit more of a projectile battle a little bit early on. Yeah, so we actually need to see Flubber winning this set for them to have any chance. Because even if we... It's 16 to 0 at the moment. If we see... Uh, and, like, Sienna even taking one stock, they'll get three more points, bumping them up to 19. And then even if Niagara came back with a whopping three stock, three stock, three stock, three stock. Like, they three stock every single next game. They'd only end up with 16 points. They'd still be two point, or uh, three points down. And rightfully so, and already a good start here for Sienna College. They take yet another stock in a lead. So it's down to all of the pressure is on Flubber right now. And that's not a fun place to be, like in any form of sport, right? It, especially team like situations. It's never fun in being in like a life or death situation in a tournament, right? Especially like especially for the FTC. Um but it's even worse when it's a crew battle situation and it's like, well, you, you, we can come back if you win this set, or we can recover some of the hemorrhaging 
like, you know, stop the bleeding a little bit and get point uh, point differential down. Right, it's the eyes on you. It's it's kind of, I don't know, your, your team depends on you. It's a little bit more than just individual pressure. You're, yes. you know, you being in your own head. And some people so. thrive on that, though, because when you have teammates, exactly. it's harder to get stuck in your own head because you have people kind of cheering you on, right? Because presumably they're all in a room. They're all playing on the same switches because nobody's left the lobby. Right. So we definitely know they're all in the same place. Um, oh, nice that's catch. important. That was a good catch there. And it's one of those things, right? There's a little bit of coaching going on, I'm sure, coming out from the teammates. Good reads. Um, and that's what it comes down to. And I think that's the joy of crew battles is you get to partake with a team. Good parry coming out. I mean, the pressure at the moment, right? All, all of the momentum is, is is in the side of Sienna. Like, and, and that's, it's such a difficult place to come out from because Jason is playing so well that Flubber's struggling to find entrance. Like, even with Flubber starting to take a lead, he immediately starts to lose it from the pressure of Jason. Good arrow. There's just good roll reads coming out. Look at that shielding. Like, he's looking for those parries actively. I mean, the fact that we saw, you know, the link come out to such a deficit already in the first stock. I mean, this is this is a welcome change. Now he has the young link in a disadvantage in a sense. Let's see if I can actually pull this off. The lending him with an air, trying to chase down Uppy. Oh, the first hit actually goes in and it counts for a kill. So finally, the first lead here for Niagara, potentially of this entire set. Oh, two bombs pressuring that shield. That's so scary. Flubber at this point, though, trying to survive, trying to hold on to that good DI. But unfortunately, it's a little bit too on edge there. So now it's a perfect 0-0 zero to zero last stock situation. Again, a little bit of pressure. Sienna, again, we're seeing Jason put on good bomb pressure. But again, like you were saying, Flubber... Managing to catch up a little bit. If he manages to take this round, he puts his team into a position where they might be able to come back. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of the storyline that we've been kind of re-emphasizing this entire time. Because again, Flubber desperately needs to take this one away. The parry and the subsequent hits almost landing. But again, Flubber still searching for this. Only a single hit of fair ends up connecting and he ends up going for an up tilt. All of Where's it connecting. Grab, Where's the bomb? Finds the connection. Ooh. Gets him off. The arrow doesn't connect, but he charges up the smash. Released it slightly too early. Gonna go for the read, though. Oh, no. what he was planning for with that down smash. Nice air dodge. Yeah, now the pressure's back on. No. The advantage state is in the side of Jason. Throws out the bomb. Shield's gonna happen. Doesn't catch the bomb, though. Jason looking for that forward air. Gets back up with the spin blade. Ooh. Gets the read, but doesn't get the, oh, doesn't get the follow up. That's so unfortunate. This is, I mean, I think we're both kind of cheering on for Flubber at the moment because we, we want to see this, like, we want to see the storyline play out. But Jason. Not only that, but hit. I want to see this set go out even more. This has no, been absolutely. so entertaining. And it's, okay, good, good oh! shield, good read here. <laughs> Not going to be able to find it. Oh my god, goes for the pogo stick, doesn't find the connection. Good. Boomerang, he's looking to commit for it, stays off. All right, I thought it was going to re, like, answer there with the dash oh, The boomerang's going to come back. Good shield pressure, gets the dodge, goes for the fast drop on the neutral air. The pressure is back on Jason in advantage state. He has it. That's the wrong time to release the shield. Flubber has an opportunity. He could have up smashed. Oh no, the F smash, it misses, it's shielded, downer, not gonna connect oh, either. No, 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 Jason fishing for downers! And that's going to be Sienna managing to win the set with the one stock that was so close. That is gonna put Sienna oh. up to 19 points, which means it's mathematically impossible for Niagara to catch up. But what they can do is reduce that score differential, which will help them in the long run. No, absolutely, and valiant effort from flubber man i you just got to give it up for him but that that's just unfortunate so unfortunate i wanted to see that set go on even farther but of course jason being the better player in that scenario but uh i gotta say that last play was uh was a little bit out there three straight uh approach down airs and of course i mean one of them is bound to work don't you think eventually and one of them did work oh uh. man <laughs> That was so close. It was looking for a second there that Flubber really was going to be able to bring that back. And he started putting in the work, right? He managed to find the answers. He managed to catch it up and make it really, really close. So I am excited to see more coming out from that player throughout the weeks.
But now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be moving on to Team Captain for Siena, Mr. Mike Pango, playing against Ost117. Yeah, interesting matchup. Ost, uh, if I'm not mistaken, last week when, uh, when Niagara was able to take, when I mentioned that single point, that, that single was point Aust. was taken by Ost. It was Ost in, uh, in game one, but he ended up getting reverse 2 0 so Ost at this point, kind of the, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, even with that stat line, uh, quote unquote, the front runner for the squad for now, trying to at least get some points on the board here for Niagara, because like you mentioned, this isn't it, ladies and gentlemen, even though it's mathematically impossible for Niagara to be back in this game, they can still make it back in the season because looking at the standings right now, just kind of looking how Niagara is doing at the moment, Niagara currently has one win, one loss, and uh, their points, their point differential isn't exactly too great. So whatever ex uh, whatever kind of edge that they can get right now to keep themselves up in that leaderboard will be super crucial by the end. And ladies and gentlemen, we're already into our next one. Like you mentioned before, Mike, a.k.a. Pango, versus Aust117 on the board. A Yoshi versus a Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario is an interesting... Right, so we, we've spoken about Mario, I believe, two weeks ago. We were kind of saying he's, he's kind of like the Shoto character of Smash, right? He's he's the most general <laughs> character. He, he told me I'm wrong, right? He does he does everything <laughs> well. He's kind of the base character, you know? If you're good, if, right. you, if you understand the fundamentals of Mario, you understand the fundamentals of Smash, right? Can you disagree okay. with that? Okay, but I wouldn't argue Dr. Mario for that. No, 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 no. But, but the, and, and this is where my point was going to. Dr. Mario okay. being a bit different, of course, being not an Echo character because they weren't around at the time. Uh, but right. being a borderline clone, there's some, there's some large differentials that uh, up mind I'd like you to go through. Oh my gosh. Yes, more damage. Uh, you know, different different moves have different trajectories, such as, as you guys right saw, uh, saw right there, that upbeat sends a little bit more to the left and sends with a little bit more oomph in a sense. Also, the Tornado having a little bit more of a hitbox, but, ooh, and that F-Smash also being oh so powerful. But its biggest change is probably his recovery. It's incredibly weak in comparison to really every character in the Smash lineup. Yep, and also, uh, Dr. Mario's uh, spike hitbox is actually in his down air, unlike Mario, which is, of course, is the forward air, which is another interesting situation because you don't have to hit the sweet spot. It's much easier to find that spike, that meteor yes. smash, with Dr. Mario. His Ooh. down air is completely different. You no longer have the flood. You have the old uh, Dot Tornado, which we just saw coming out there as I was talking about it. Oh, that down B connecting on the shield and Yoshi, that down B, it's so, so dangerous. But even then, still surviving here is Mike for Sienna, still extending this lead onto Niagara and still trying to get those famous Mario up air strings. It's still going. Gets a weak hit, weak hit, fair. Of course, fair doesn't actually spike. It's just going to send you really far off to the right. And so much damage has been done. Aust117 is now down to his last stock, finally taking away the first stock of Mike. Oh, yeah. And being able to find that first stock isn't good. It's going to slow them down a little bit. But we are just seeing Mike here bringing out the Dr. Mario for the first time, I think, ever we've seen uh, on any of the matches. And proving really? that he knows the character, right? I, it's interesting because the other thing we didn't touch on is Dr. Mario is slower, right? Like 100%. His air speed's less. But, like, his specials do considerably more damage. He kind of leans right. more towards a heavy character, right? Instead of, like, an, a, yes. a lighter character. I think that's I the, the easier way to differentiate the two of them. And that seems to play into Mike's playstyle quite well. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, Dr. Mario, a little bit more of a heavy hitter. Weak, uh, weak recovery game, in a sense. But still has the projectiles and even... I do like to respect that cape a lot because we saw usage of it earlier over onto ledge to keep that Yoshi up in the air to keep him, you know, at least above that Dr. Mario where he could do significantly more damage. And also he was out, he was, the, uh, I'm sorry, without a jump at that time. So he was able to get the wide hitbox of the tornado to hit. And uh, I mean, overall, the Dr. Mario pick against this Yoshi has actually been way better than I thought it was initially. Yeah. I, I think I think a lot of people underestimate Dr. Mario because they're just like, oh, he's, he's just this he's Mario Echo clone. But uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to him. I, you know, you, you call me the encyclopedia sometimes. And yeah. Dr. Of weird characters specifically. 
And I, I think in a lot of the time, I think Dr. Mario is a better character for people to learn that are new at Smash than Mario. Huh, okay. A bit, I mean, a bit yeah, of, I mean... Maybe a bit of a controversial statement, but I feel like mm -hmm. the, the heavier punches and just the general slower pace of his game plan is easier for newer players to pick up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, absolutely. Playing Doctor Mario for the first time is like, what is going on? Well, I'm sorry. Oh, let's Falcon. let's rewind. Let's rewind. Let's rewind. Our matchups have completely switched. By the way, you guys aren't seeing new players on the board, ladies and gentlemen. You guys are still watching Mike versus Aust 117, but we're seeing two completely different characters, uh, and we're seeing an SD, a zero a zero percent to zero percent SD there from Mike. What is going on right now? Oh, right now, oh, wait, Navi. Wait, wait, wait. Mike, Mike is starting to pick up. Look at, oh my god, the wave dashing coming out on Rob. <laughs> Let's go. We love to wave see dashing it. with Rob. Yeah, oh, uh, look, it's it's a gorgeous piece here. There. Oh, okay. The fidget spinner gets the knee, but he manages to pick it back <laughs> up. <mid> <laughs> there comes the Robo Laser putting on the pressure. Goes oh, for the, the down dance. smash there, turning himself into a fidget spinner. He manages to find the stock. Man, I love you and I hate you, Navik, man. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tell you straight up. Oh my! Casting with me is definitely an experience, eh? You have your moments. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> oh man, but hey, in comparison to that first stock, Mike has had quite the interesting uh, first minute of this game, going from a zero percent SD to now a thirty-three percent stock so far without taking too much damage. Finally, down air in a back air. Kind of doubling up that damage from Aus 117, but of course that Rob is going to be able to take full advantage of Captain Falcon in this matchup. Lots of space to work with. Captain Falcon doesn't exactly have too much spacing options, and uh, and Rob, a multifaceted talent at, at, in really every definition. I mean, you got to respect the fidget spinner, right? Like the gyro is really right, really of course. Good. The Robo Beam's good for spacing. Air boosters, his back air is phenomenal. Right? His down smash will punish you on ledges. Did he just... No, 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 no. Taunt? Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Yeah, that's just pouring salt I, I, for, onto the room, but I was so, expecting I, a footstool, maybe. Yeah, no, that's oh, what, well, Okay! On, on, all right, coming back out here, the pressure's being put on. Fun topic about footstooling, by the way, whilst I got Rob in the game. When he uses Robo Burner, which is his recovery, he is footstool immune. Really? Yeah, in you upbeat. can't footstool Rob when he's recovering with his upbeat. Well, I mean, I guess that makes sense. I can't name another upbeat that's footstoolable. Uh, well, there, and also Rob's has no hitbox, so it does no damage. So if it wasn't, if it was footstoolable on top of everything else, it would be very unfortunate. Right. Okay. I guess that makes sense. But back to the game, though. Os 117. 85% right now. He took full advantage of the town and city platforms on the side, and he's taking full advantage oh again. <laughs> Lining the ROM up with an upbeat. It has to make his way back. The gyro covering, up smash covering. Great setup from Mike. He goes for the side beat, but the platform again helping out the Captain Falcon, trying to go for the spike. Not going to work out. He's back on stage. A random input there for uh, for Mike Pango, just trying to cover his options, just seeing what happens. A little bit, a little bit of paranoia in a sense because Captain Falcon now at 68%. You got to know that he's lining up for that Falcon knee, and he's waiting for it now. Has the gyro in play? He drops oh, he's gonna get <laughs> No. Z drops it, goes for an up air, uh, it doesn't hit the last hit of it, so he goes back for yet another up air, and it just works in his favor. Why not? Ladies and gentlemen, that's yet another W for Sienna. Not a single game, not a single point has been put on the board for Niagara University. And that's not to say that we've seen some valiant efforts, that we've seen some games go to last stock and all that, but man, that, that was rough. Yeah, I mean, I, I really liked what we saw out of both of the players overall, though, right? Because it just showed their versatility, right? Going from Dr. Mario to Rob, very different play styles. And also, right. like, <laughs> man, I did not expect that to happen at all. Uh, and seeing Falcon coming out as well for Ost, it, he had some really good, like, when he was able to, when he, when... Mike gave him the space and he was able to find the options and actually get some combos going. We saw some really nice stuff coming out from Ost. So, 
I'm I'm excited. I believe it was actually Ost that got the perfect stock, or it might have been a St. Peter's player against Canisius, uh, which we might see again tonight. Yeah, I think so. I think our second match, yes, Canisius versus St. Peter's later on tonight. And that one's going to be a big one. We're talking about the two top, uh, two of the top three colleges at the moment. St. Peter's, of course, being number one right now, and Canisius with their uh, one in one record so far. Yeah, and everybody's a massive fan, it seems. Whenever we see him on stream, we see the chat, you know, light up a little bit. But when Ricardo coming out from St. Peter's pops his head into stream here and shows a match, there's always some support. And we did see him perfect three stocks. Uh, last time we saw him play on Captain Falcon playing against Joker. Who was it again? Uh, I believe it was, uh, Ricardo was on the... Oh, yes, Ricardo! That game. Legendary I Ricardo! Oh. I actually I don't know who was playing Joker that game. Again, uh, Joker, I, I could tell you, man, but I could just tell you straight up that Ricardo is certainly a talent to look out for, to say the very least. Byleth. Oh, a character that I oh so do like enjoy seeing played. I, I'm excited to see her come more into her own space as people learn her and figure it out as a character. Uh, we'll but... run us through it then because I'm a, I'm a little... I, I, I have already explained this the last time that we commentated. I'm a yeah. little bit behind on the Byleth meta. So I'm, I'm, I, I wouldn't say there's a Byleth meta at the moment. I think there's lots of experimentation coming out from Byleth overall. Right. But of course, depending on what direction you input anything, Byleth of course has four of the hero's relics. You've got Felnor, Ardbar, Amir, and of course the Sword of the Creator. And each of them have a set input. So I believe off the top of my head, Felnor is if you neutral. Ardbar, which is the lance, is if you use any of the sides. Sword of the Creator is all of your ups. And your down special is Amir, which is the hammer. And Amir's an interesting one because I would compare it to a Warlock Punch or a Falcon Punch, right? It's a super okay. high risky move. But if it works out super well, uh, it, it, it works out. And I think that's all of the bold moves, right? Yeah, we've mentioned Falcon Punch, we mentioned War uh, the Warlock Punch. There's the Hatchet Man as well coming out from Hero. Uh, and that's going to be stock one. Once again, going for Sienna on the Shulk. Yeah, in this matchup, I would call an, an edge on the Shulk, I would like to say. I don't know, I don't know about your opinions on it. Uh, I, you know, I, I think it's an interesting one. I'm excited. I, Monado, like Shulk in general, is an interesting character. The choice of the Monados is a lot of options. Uh, in the game that we'll see, which will be St. Peter's playing against Canisius coming up, we will see another Great Shulk. Uh, we'll see another Shulk player on the side of Canisius. So we'll see two very different play styles because Canisius is one of those, or uh, Canisius, Shulk is one of those characters that really lets you express express individuality, unless you're gonna sit there and short hop full uh, fair, which is also a completely reasonable strategy. Right, it, it, yeah, for Shulk, absolutely. And uh, yeah, no, that's kind of a, that's kind of a testament to, to Shulk in general. Uh, you have the more, the more flashy players, and usually the flashier players are the ones that we kind of see in that more top level. But, of course, we still have, you know, a couple of players climbing up the ladder with that quote-unquote viable method of just short hop fairing, short hop fairing. But we kind of see a hybrid here from, uh, from Nick, a.k.a. Knight, so far in this matchup. And I, and I kind of like the versatility so far, and I also love the movement. Great parry. Couldn't exactly capitalize on it, but beautiful move so far. That Smash Monado, I mean, in my opinion, it, it probably took forever. But uh, Mr. Paytonator somehow making his way through, surviving through the wall of fares. But still, at 138, this is a tall task. See, I'm trying to think. I feel like you do need to be throwing out the the down air, or uh, the down special from Byleth, right? Because it does have super armor. There's Felnaught coming out. Of course, if Felnaught charges to full percent, it will pretty much insta-break shields. So you can't even shield it. You have to jump, and it's a, it's a hit scan. It just covers the whole map uh, in a line. So if you're caught off by that, and you try and block to save yourself, you are getting shield broke. Ooh. Did you survive All right. That? Went out oh no! He's gonna play out here. One stock either side here, so there's only gonna be a point to gain from either player. Goes for the up smash, gets go. punished for Ooh. it. Followed up, looking for the up air. Switching Minato's mid air there, looking for a slight animation cancel. 
Yeah, 109 was oh was Smash Monado. This is so scary. Oh, and the fair and like I mentioned I how scary it was. Yeah, no, the, <laughs> the grapple on Byleth is ridiculous. It's longer than Joker's. I see that now. Uh which I, I'm, is, I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah, it you know, people thought, wow, Joker can, can recover from some distance. Uh, but Joker's recovery is mostly vertical, where Byleth actually oh, gets some no. decent horizontal distance. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is, of course, going to be another this victory. Going towards Sienna. That was, you know, that was the first game. I mean... First game, of th or potentially three. Yes, first game, potential three. We could, we could see a comeback coming out there. But once again, that's going to be Nick Knight taking a point away from Mr. Paytonator, the team captain for Niagara. Pay uh, Mr. Payne has been playing a lot of Byleth. We saw him on Byleth last week as well. So definitely be practicing the character. I think Shulk's a hard matchup for her unless you really know it. Mm hmm Yeah, I mean, it's it's relatively one of the more linear matchups, to say the least, or one of the more linear characters to play against. It's, it's just purely because of how... I, I don't know how to explain it. It's it's really it's really weird to play against it because it's it's so oppressive. But if you're a character that's a little bit more rushed down, we mentioned that play style earlier of that short hop fair, short hop fair. Yeah. So it's, it's good versatility in a sense. And when you mention the word versatility when mentioning Shulk, that's exactly what this character is made for. The character literally has different abilities, different stat changes midway through the game. So you have to find a way to kind of ride your way through it. And I think the most dangerous one to go against, especially, not especially with Violet, but especially with characters that have a, a weaker recovery, is that Speed Monado and that Jump Monado. Purely because he could just chase you off stage the entire time. Yeah, and I think that's the other massive downside to Violet not having a counter, right? Although... Byleth's bold move does, of course, have uh, armor. It, it's not the same as a counter, right? It's like you can parry and you can punish people with that. But a lot of the Fire Emblem characters find Shulk quite easy because of the parry. And Shulk actually has an answer for it. Where if we see... If, if there's a need here, right? Knight can literally just run into Emir and counter it. And probably instantly take a stock off of Byleth on like 50% because of the multiplier and how hard that move hits. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it, it's rare that we actually see Shulks countering, and, uh, and we've already seen two of them already connect so far in, uh, in game one, and another one here in game two. And going from Shield Monado directly into Smash Monado, and the first input that he pulls out is a grab and a forward throw. So that certainly is going to kill. And here we go, it's that Speed Monado that I mentioned before. Not only is it oppressive offstage, but certainly against a character like Byleth, who has you know, pretty high frame data in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat moves. It's tough. And ooh, that was a chance there for the counter, like you mentioned before, that down smash take it a so, little so bit that, too that long. Was, but yeah, so it's, it's the, tough. That was Byleth's down smash. What I'm referring to is Byleth's uh, down special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, uh, right, yeah. Oh, that, there's the bolt of light. Ooh. So if you get connected with that, it's instantly a shield break. Really? Yes, it, I believe it does like 90% of people's shields. So if you've been holding it for slightly too long, it will just break your shield. That's oh okay okay so it would be it would be more of a you know how long they charge it type thing I thought it was just straight up like like right there like a like a weaker hit of it you no, scared no, no, me no, there no, no. you, you scared me there for a second it. when when you saw my shoot the beam of light when it was fully charged that will right that would shield break gotcha gotcha yeah no you scared me there for a second the way that you <laughs> just, said it just, just the tap. oh man <laughs> just the tap should be the most broken character <laughs> in the game well, like a like a link randomly yeah. Just a little link arrow would, would be able yeah, yeah, to kill, in a sense. You're stunned. I, I, yeah, but I understand. And, yeah. uh, oh, man, it's it's yet another unfortunate situation for Niagara University. Yet another game where it just seems as if they're running into a brick wall. And it's a three-stock lead here for Nick, a.k.a. Knight, here on my lot. So I and, like uh, what Mr. Pay like, so now we're starting to see this controlly playstyle coming out a bit more, right? We're seeing our man <laughs> there is going to be failed or fully charged. It hurts. Oh, oh no! Oh, <laughs> not even Vilas. Big up B can help him there. That's unfortunate. And ladies and gentlemen, to to kind of wrap it up in a bow. That's uh, that's how many points for Sienna, Navic? Uh, that was a two stock, was it not? Coming out at the end, yes. was that a one stock? No, that, that was, was a two, two stock. stock. 
So Meaning that we have 29 uh, points for Sienna, if my math's right. Absolutely. I, I, I'd hope my math is right, because there is n plus 4. Yeah, your, your, your math is right. All right, wonderful. It's wonderful. 29 points. I'd be very concerned if I couldn't add 4. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> for someone that I call the human encyclopedia, man, I mean... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I'm that, like that my would math's be right tough. there, right? I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be Sienna taking it 29, completely locking out Niagara. And we're going to be hopping to a quick break as we set up for game number two, which will be Canisius playing against St. Peter's. I'm excited. This is the match of the night. I'd argue this is the match of the season. If, these, if there's two teams to go against each other, it's these two. So we'll be back with more action momentarily. <laughs>
And ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We've got Canisius's Casey playing against St. Peter's Ricardo in game number one. If there was going to be a game of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, it would be this game up, Bynes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Two powerhouse players. Casey coming in, an all-star for his team, and Ricardo, the illustrious Ricardo. We saw him last week come out with the Captain Falcon Pull a JV4 stock, a.k.a., ladies and gentlemen, he pulled a perfect game of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, not losing a single percent in that game, not taking a single hit of damage, but against a character like Pikachu, that must be a little bit of a taller task for him. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, okay, no, we're good, we're good. All right, I was we're in it. We're in there. there, you know. <laughs> uh, but we managed just to save it there. Now, this is an interesting matchup, right? I, I was I was about to... I, I, I say it every time we see him play. Casey is a phenomenal Pikachu player. One like one of the best Pikachu players, I think, in his region. He might be PR. That, that plays very, very well. But also, very competitive region. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. But definitely somebody to keep an eye on. And probably eventually will be PR'd if not already. Uh, and Ricardo, I mean, he's the stylish man, right? Like you said, we saw him play a perfect game, but that isn't happening this time around as Casey takes first stop. Yeah, good stuff from Casey so far. I was going to mention earlier, this matchup is a little bit more on the edge for Pikachu, purely because of how oppressive this character is and how dynamic this character is in terms of you know, spacing and the rushdown. So you see right here, the string action on Pikachu, the string play is one of the best in the game. Also a heavy hitter in occasions like you guys saw right there with the down B. But of course, when he wants to space out, when he wants to run away, he could just throw out some thunder jolts. But here comes the Captain Falcon with a great catch on the up smash. Yeah, and that's going to be able to take stock off of Tasty. So even if Casey manages to find like the stock here, oh, there come the juggles. I mean, Pikachu's one of those combo characters, right? And when you're even at, like... Can can anybody low-profile any of Pikachu's moves? I don't think so. No. No, absolutely not. Pikachu can profile. certainly... No, so Pikachu is a living low-profile. Low profile. But not Captain Falcon, yeah. No, yeah. But, um... No, I, I wasn't saying Falcon. I was just trying to think of any, any character in general could low-profile him. But I don't think anybody's more low-profile than Pikachu. Maybe no, absolutely Pikmin. not. Maybe a Pikmin or follow him off. I think that's about it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we see yeah, no, they're... Get some good pacing. Oh, oh my god, god, using the thunder there. Quick attack's gonna be able to get him back on to the stage. Now, once again, uh -oh. the advantage Woo! position goes for the forward smash. Isn't gonna be able to kill. Just throwing out thunder jolts. He has thunder ready. Good parry goes into it. Looks for the thunder connection. Doesn't find it. Again, just throwing out the jolts. Gets the... Uh, I believe that was just the neutral back. Oh, my oh. yes, Unfortunate. Two points, Two points to Canisius off the bat, and I can't emphasize this enough, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking at a player who had probably the most dominant performance that I've ever seen while on the mic, and he just lost out to Casey in a two-stock fashion. That's just uh, that's just kind of a a testament to what kind of player we're dealing with here with Casey. Yeah, Casey, an absolutely phenomenal player. But Ricardo, nobody to joke about either. I believe we've seen Ricardo bring out Terry a few times as well. Yes, he is. He's a he's a little bit he's a little bit of a Falcon Terry kind of mixture. We saw him pull out the Terry last week, uh, right after his Falcon game, kind of as a a little bit of BM or maybe a little bit of a showcase of sorts. Who knows? But no, it's uh, I'm intrigued. To see if we see a switch up or if he just stays chilling as he is. And then two points up for Canisius already. Casey showing a strong start. Interestingly enough, I think we've seen Casey go last every single time we've seen Canisius play. So mixing it up this time around. Yeah, we're still waiting on a decision here. Are they doing picks and bans right now? Where, uh, yes, what do you they think? are. We're going to Final Destination. Right. Again. I would have I liked to seen potentially a Smashville pick. Or... So I mean, Casey, be, Casey this... did a good job of banning Smashville, first of all. I would have liked to seen the Smashville. But also, 
maybe maybe a Kalos in a sense, but also Pikachu is really good on Kalos. So I'm really thinking about this in, in more of a Captain Falcon sense, but Pikachu is is almost a perfect counter to Captain Falcon on multiple maps. Yeah, it's it's definitely a tough matchup overall. I would not want to be the Falcon in that. And maybe we won't be the Falcon in that, as we may see a character switch. Like we said, Ricardo does play multiple characters. When we are going to Final Destination, they're going to be a Swiss out. Army knife. Oh, we are seeing a character switch. We've seen the Doctor, and now we're bringing out the plumber, Ricardo, switching to Mario. Yeah, this is a curveball of sorts, <laughs> to say the very least. Did not expect Ricardo to be pulling out a Mario here, but we've seen battles, we've seen wars before between Mario and Pikachu on the national stage. A rising player uh, that some of y'all may know. <laughs> his name is Dark Wizzy, and of course has has his battles with Esam, a local player to me at this point. It's very happy to for him to be around here. But uh, Dark Wizzy usually wins out this set, uh, this uh, this matchup. If I'm not mistaken, he is a perfect 3-0 right now on Esam. Oh my! What the hell was that? No, I, I might be misinformed. Might be a 2030, but I don't even care what just what I just said. What was that? A down B spiking off to the right. I mean, I I'm a, a bit stunned for words there. That was a very odd way for that to hit. But we are back to the two stock, and actually at the moment Ricardo is going to be in the lead here, managing to get slight uh, percentage advantage. Now the return here back into the advantage state is Casey. Ricardo going for the fireball. We got the fire. We got the thunder jolts against that fireball. They'll be able to zone each other out, pressure them each other. Mario and Pikachu, uh, they're interesting because they share similar play styles, right? They want the same style of game plan. Uh, Pikachu obviously having much longer combos overall, but Mario could argue kills slightly earlier. Mhm. Mm I would like to think so. Uh, especially with Mario's back throw, which is an incredible option. Also, going back on my point earlier, it wasn't a 3-0, it wasn't a 2-0. It's actually a 2-1 between Dark Dark Wizzy and Sam. I do apologize earlier for that. But, uh, you know, in terms of Final Destination, I would like to think again that Pikachu still has the edge on this map. Again, they do have similar properties on, uh, on their projectiles, but it's purely because of that recovery there that i was going to mention a little bit early on but ricardo just kind of shows it to you guys in a physical demonstration because again that uh that thunder jolt is very easy to gimp with and because of the fact that mario doesn't exactly have too much space or too many options off stage he's just kind of gonna kind of die there but a second kill in a row with the f smash so the current down panic the last continues. Stock. The current panic continues. Casey will find the stock to manage to win the set, right? But we were taught. I was <laughs> saying how Mario, you know, maybe doesn't have the longest combos. Ricardo, put me wrong there. You know, he uh, he put in some good work there. Managed to find connections. Managed to find the combos. Gonna get the recovery here. He just needs to play it smart, and that's exactly what the man's doing. Playing it slow. Good use of the ash attack there. I like how Casey waited that out. Charged it actually. Just looked at that fireball and went. That's gonna go over me. I'm just gonna keep holding this. Oh, no. oh man! It Screw happened. you! <laughs> I, oh I man! Your I trends, did... man! Yeah? I did Doesn't even matter. Just before the match had started, before we came off of our break to my good friend Upmind here, that this game would go to a game three. And uh, here we are. Yeah. I mean, we were kind of bantering at that point, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. In that sense, I yeah. mean, <laughs> it's going down to the wire and. You mentioned before to me off stream that this would be the match of the night. And this is literally turning out to, to be our marquee match because we haven't seen a single game on stream, uh, on uh, a, a set on stream, go all the way to a third game. So he's going to stay with a Mario, though. We don't actually see Ricardo going for a switch, but instead we might see Casey switching it up. I hope not. That Pikachu is looking fire. Yeah, so we're going back to pick some bands. We're waiting for the St. Peter's bands. I think they're having a bit of a discussion at the moment. Um, if they don't switch, I very, very much so doubt. I don't think we've ever seen Casey put into a position where he switched characters. I think he may have for a joke once and played Game & Watch. Uh, but that would have been like week two of the invitation, or if I'm remembering correctly. It was a long time ago. Uh, where, where do you take Pikachu if Final Destination is not working out for you? But I guess it did just work out for you. Well, it worked 
well, it worked out for the Mario, but not in the way that I thought it would. I did think that Pikachu would have the edge. Um, the big moves on Mario don't usually hit as as comfortably as we saw earlier. I would like to see a little bit more up smash usage. That one hits reliably, but that uh, if the S smash works, it works. But uh, overall, I would really, really like to see a smash fill pick here. Or even a battlefield pick because Mario. Oh, Mario. I love the up air strings and those platforms literally are used as kind of landing targets for him to reset his jumps in the middle of them. So I just want to see these plays, man. I want to see something flashy. And uh, we actually have our bands here from St. Peter's. We're going to be banning Kalos and Yoshi Story. So the script may be happening here, Navic. It's happening. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're uh, the, the potential. Like, like, you know, I hate calling it a script. Uh, and did I tell you one time, somebody legitimately thought Aww. that uh, something was scripted because we mentioned a script on stream. And, oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, no. Like, how, how, do, you, how do you react in that situation? But, I mean, just, just say that it's improvised, that we're, but we're still going through... You know, we're going through bullet points. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the best way of putting it. <laughs> I, I was just kind of stunned. Right. Uh, um, I mean... I was... <laughs> but... Oh, what? Where did this come from? Where did this come from? Ladies and gentlemen, you didn't see what we just saw, but you're about to on stream. Pit comes out for Casey. And actually, I do remember it wasn't Game & Watch. It was Pit that we've seen Casey play before. Uh, I believe he was playing against a Link player. Uh-oh. Oh, I love this. Already starting off with a style. Going for two straight down tilts, trying to find that up here, but it doesn't work. But yes, Pit could potentially be a better matchup here. Even on this map, too, I would like to argue. And, uh, of course, against the Mario, Pit is going to be able to go all the way off stage if he so chooses to, to try to gimp that Mario out. So I'm very, very excited. Pit's an interesting character, not a character you see very often, right? Like, I, I, he's not regarded as, like, super-duper high-tier. You know what I mean? I, no. I'd, say, I'd say Pit's, like, kind of a mid-tier character, maybe slightly lower. Um, he's, a, he's in his own tier, I would like to argue, because he, he's... He feels I don't more know, like a can't really compare. Character. I feel like he's a counter-pit character more than, like, a character that you do just main. You know what I mean? Ex exactly. You can't exactly compare him too much to really any other he's character in this game. Hey, um... But when you do see him coming out, I always wonder, like, what made somebody want to pick up Pit, right? Because you don't see it very often. When you do see it, Pit players tend to be very good. I think it's slowly. I also, uh, he's, you know, and then you've got the whole decision of, like, Pit versus Dark Pit, which are very different characters. Yeah, right. surprisingly. And, oh, F-Smash usage again! Yet another kill so from Ricardo. Quickly. Mary yeah, absolutely. comes out astonishingly quickly. I think it's like a... His smash uh, moves in general like, come out really quick. It might be a 7 or 9 frame start up, which is nothing. It just might be. But Pit, using an F smash of his own, gonna equalize this at two stocks. And here we go, Nair Strings coming out, immediately grabbing him into a down throw and still trying to continue on the damage. But we're in a neutral scenario! Oh. There goes that famous forward aerial baby. <laughs> gonna hit, but it's not gonna kill, of course. Yeah, the, the good the good old low high coming out from Mario, right? The dash attack, knock him up into the air, go for the spike. It's uh, classic Tekken combos. Right. Uh oh. That was, that was such a dumb joke. I'm so sorry. <laughs> coming out with the forward air. I know. Gonna, I know. Casey's gonna find the connection. Looking for the down air, doesn't quite find what he's looking for. Good air tech coming out from Ricardo here, as the percentile was actually. Unbelievably <laughs> close. I, I was uh, I was actually expecting you to to reference the uh, the it's Marvel baby video. Ah, uh, it's Marvel baby. No, it was uh, it was diagonal. Look, low <laughs> diagonal. <laughs> I'm playing a lot of Tekken recently, and low highs are definitely something you see in Tekken quite a bit. Right, right, right. But of course, we're we're not seeing Shoto's on screen. <laughs> cheeky, well, cheeky Navic. Well, we're seeing Smash. Well, we're not seeing literal Shodos. We're seeing Smash Shodo. Right, right, right. <laughs> an hour. Mario. I mean, I mean we oh. were discussing earlier. I mean, yeah. this is one of the more neutral characters in this game. Absolutely. Mario's one of those characters that I don't think has a bad matchup, but I don't think he has particularly good matchups either. Mm hmm. 
Uh, he, he is just uh -oh. very neutral gamey. I, I mean, like any combo-oriented character, though, of course Mario wants to play against heavies. Absolutely. Uh, because they're combo. Oh, they, they're just combo food. But, when out, I mean, Casey's put in a position where he might actually just straight up lose a set. And I don't think we've seen that, like, happen to Casey in a very long time. Just proving how good of a player Ricardo is. I mean, again, we're seeing two potentially top five players in this entire league, ladies and gentlemen, going at it in the regular season. This is what you like to see, and it's coming down to the wire. 95%, 107% right now on Casey. He's still trying to come in. That pit coming in clutch for him so far is way closer than the last game, I would like to argue. Random F smash is coming in, just trying to catch him off in terms of movement. These two are stuck in a Mexican standoff at this point. Neither one wants to approach, but even if they do, Inputs are ready for him, and that up smash almost killing a backer coming in, a reverse backer at that. Of course, the pit going to survive. 142. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh, the up smash being charged, but instead it's a side B, not killing either. Off the top, up smash being charged. Is that it? I don't know any. I don't know. No, what no, four throw. It has any kill throws. No, no. I, I, at least I don't think he does. Great <laughs> nair, but it's not actually going to connect all the way. Another nair going to connect all the way. Oh, this uh, any, Ricardo trying to make his way up. He be oh, he's high enough! No. And the up smash does it! 147 kill, finally! And Ricardo watches it out for his team. That was amazing! Yeah, that was incredible. That's going to put St. Peter's up to four points against Canisius' is two. That is a absolutely phenomenal different, like start difference for both of these teams. Playing fantastically well. Casey, of course, being the team captain for Canisius, being taken out. Uh, moving yeah. on, though, we have got Brett, a.k.a. Flapjack, coming out from Canisius, playing at zero ace from St. Peter's. Okay. Uh, this should be interesting. Yeah, see, it's interesting. I, obviously, the players don't know their matchups each time. It's kind of going in blind, so I'm not going to name who are coming up after this matchup. Uh, but there, there's a couple good matches uh, lined up. Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, yeah, no, pretty much every single match coming up is looking like it'll be good. Uh, game, we saw that first match go to game, uh, go all the way to game three. So maybe we'll see the next set go to game three. Potentially, potentially. I mean, I, I, the more smash you get to cast, I think everybody's happy, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. As much as the other game was, or our other set as much as it was entertaining of course closer games are gonna you know add to the content sir so yeah. uh a two to four score line so far this is as close as we can get yeah no this is this is looking incredibly close uh from game one i mean two points difference i'm, I'm trying to think you mathematically i guess mathematically you could get a three stock and then get one stock one stock right and that's the that is the only right. way to get a one point differential. Mm hmm. Ooh. We get to breathe a little bit. We're getting our picks and bands. Team Battlefield. Of course, the band from <laughs> right. St. Peter's. The classic coin flip method that we use to. Yeah. See, I wanted to talk about that. If you were if you were to be in in one of these teams is kind of position. Yeah. And you had to and you you had to go at it in a coin flip. What side would you usually choose? Um would you switch it up or are you are you inclined to to one I, to one side? I, and I've been asked this question before and I've always made it a joke that I flip a coin and whatever that ends up on is what I pick. <laughs> See, but that that gives you less odds though. In a sense. I mean, presumably, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, statistically, but in actuality... We had really. this conversation at some point. We, we it's have, co it's we, coming we to have, me now. We have had this conversation. Uh, it's a 25% chance that it lands twice. Uh, well, sort of. Um, technically, so, it's still yeah, sort of. It, it, because you're taking right. the account in. But it's technically, it's still 50 on the flip. But yeah, technically, for the continuation, is 25. But you're using different coins. Right, exactly. There's, there's a whole other factor. But can we talk about this <laughs> Can we talk about this, this matchup really quick? Before this we is a it? weird one that I I don't see either. I have a top piranha plant in my region. His name is Diz. 
And we have a Roy, one of the best Roys on the world. His name is Goblin, of course. And uh, we don't exactly see Krom versus Piranha Plant all the time. This is, this is a weird one that uh, I would like to say that is more inclined towards the Piranha Plant, but because of how oppressive Krom can be, depending, you know, the play style of the player, you know, it... This one's this one's a little bit more in the gray area for me. Well, I got I got some information before the game, right during the captain's meeting, that good old right. Flapjack there, Mr. Brett, was uh, was in fact practicing his up bees out of shield, uh, which I feel like is every <laughs> crumb's bread and butter. Right. Um, oh, and there, there it is. is. There it is. Right there, showing the practice is paying off uh, for <laughs> his uh, up bees out of shield. Uh, if we see it again, yeah. But uh, I, we we could literally hear it in the background, so. I know what was going on. Uh, and, oh, there it is again. I mean... Oh, I, and the F smash right above ledge. And, and I okay. feel like that's, uh, that's Crumb's bread and butter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Shield. It's, well, it's, now it is before oh, oh, people there it goes again. not use it off shield. Oh, it waits. And there it is again. See? Practicing. Another one. Can we get a counter? Uh, do, <laughs> I, uh, you know what? Give me a second. I can set one up. <laughs> But no, what, no, it's okay. No, I, it's of course okay. not. Of course not. I'm joking. But <laughs> what we are seeing... Oh, no, no tech. Of oh, course, there's the Piranha Copter better. getting it back on to there. Now, I want to see I some love more that poison. name. Oh, it's such God. a good name. I want to see more Poison Fog into... All right, well, uh, Kapui went out there. Uh, or Patui, technically. And there's the shield Kapui. into up here. Oh, no. uh, we need, I think it's a difficult one because you Poison Breath and Krom runs into it, shields, and up bees out of shield. You Patui, mm -hmm. and Krom runs up to it, shields, and up bees out of shield. Mm -hmm. You long stem strike, and Krom runs at you, rolls, and up bees. <laughs> right. And that was a three stock, correct? Just, just kind of uh, getting I that believe so, right. yes. That was a okay. three stock coming out uh, for Lord. Flapjack. Gosh. Yeah, zero ace. I mean, he had the setups too. He was getting some decent damage, but up he had a shield. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you can't fault a Chrome player, right? That has been no. If it's in, if the it's... muscle memory, it's a very intensive combo, right? The timing I mean, if has it's to in be in your perfect. move set. You might as well use it. You plink it every time, right? You're hitting the P links, um, and it's. I mean, you can't really argue with it. Uh, I mean, if it works, it works. It worked. <laughs> I mean, it worked. Well, especially with the fact that Piranha Plant is more inclined to actually approach you. And, and it, no, you know, absolutely. In a sense. And, and when he approaches you, you say, you just shield. you're approaching me? And then you shield. <laughs> oh, and you're you approaching me? me? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. And uh, it seems as if for now... We have a quite quite the foothold here for uh for <laughs> for flapjack, but um yeah I don't know I I have a feeling that we've seen flapjack play Roy at some point. I think that's I think that's something in the back of my head just going around. Yeah. But I I I have a feeling it's in it's in his arsenal because Crom and Roy they're very similar characters. I mean that's that's what you could say with most of the Fire Emblem characters. <laughs> it's no, I mean, man, I wish there was more to say on that game. I, I think we can definitely highlight, right, overall. It's a 3-0. You can't, you can't exactly analyze every single movement or anything like that. But no, you're absolutely right. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's less of a toss-up of swords. But this is what I like. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see it on your screen very soon. Zero Ace switching it up on us, switching up the play style, switching up the moveset. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going back to an old favor. We got Link on the board. Oh my goodness. Well, and, and we should see some differences here, right? Because Link's now going to be able to put on a bit more pressure. Piranha Plant, of course, being a great character, not fantastic against Krom. Because uh, you don't have many options for it, unfortunately. You could go for more offensive grabs. But let, let's, uh, I'll, I'll let everybody mentally count how many times we see good old Brett here come shield into up B, but he's putting on good pressure. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're joking about, we're having a bit of a meme, 
uh, on, on the crumb play style, but it works, it works. Coming out with the boomerang, getting some good pressure. There's the roll, punishing it. Now Zero Ace knows what's coming, right? He knows what to expect out of shield, that if Brett doesn't start, like, just having different options, option selecting a little bit more, then the repetition should be punished because he knows it's coming. Ah, uh, yeah, in a sense, and, and it's a little bit better coverage in a sense for Link now. We saw the Nair being used and the arrows being used off stage to cover and an uppy mid stage for a Link. You don't see that too much. But if it works, it works. And oh, I, I feel like we've been saying that a lot. But ladies and gentlemen, if it's convenient for you and allows you to win, you just got to go for it. And this time, it's a Z drop bomb to get a kill. Not something that we see too much. Yeah, no, Z dropping bombs. I mean, Z dropping items in general, right? Is it, there's, a, there's a time and a place. And when it does work out, it feels really, really refreshing. Now, back into the advantage state. We find Brett. He's going to shield. Oh my god, he didn't up be out of shield. The, uh, the options oh my God. coming out. The boomerang goes oh, way too far. Oh, there it is. Right. You jinxed it. <laughs> Caster's curse, baby. A hundred percent. And it's interesting because Zero Ace isn't actually that far behind. He's managing to find good pressure with the bow, right? Using the bombs to his advantage as well. Kind of zoning it out. I like the choice of uh, Breath of the Wild Link or Old Link uh, or Adult Link in this case because being able to situationally explode your bombs when you oh, want to and set up and punish because of it is a really, really smart play for it. And in general right. here, good pressure coming out. Zero is taking the lead here, actually putting Brett on the back burner. He has rage, so I'm gonna say, we're probably gonna see a stock being taken by uh, Brett very, very oh soon my, here. What? But good combo, 30%. Yeah, a, a stylish little string there. And ooh, we were about to see another one, but of course, the uh, the good old classic up B at, <laughs> up B at a disadvantage. Works out in his favor to stop the nice stylish combo again. And oh my god, Zero is popping off Good right DI. now. Arrow immediately into a dash attack. And like you mentioned, amazing DI. And look at that. DI. He's going nuts. He's not going to be able to recover. That's He's going to get the BM. <laughs> oh no. Oh, not like this is what they say. That was say. a great game. A great game from Zero Ace, but. That's just the advantage with Chrom there. You, you're going to be able to kind of act as a, a homing missile off stage, and that's just going to be it. And when in that's doubt, a game for up be out of When in doubt, <laughs> up be out of shield, baby. <laughs> and there are multiple though. characters that we could see that we could see do that tonight. Oh, yeah, 100%. And coming out of that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we did see Kanisha's down, but now they're up four points. So, right. good, good stats over there, managing to bring back quite a bit. We're going to go back into picks and bans as we get into game number three. I mean, I'm, I'm not even sure what to say on that one, right? That first game was, I think, Zero Ace just kind of not quite realizing what was happening for a moment. And then, or trying to, or trying to find an opening. I shouldn't say that he, was, he didn't know what was happening. Trying to find an opening around it because... He was playing that really, really well against Piranha Plant, decided to switch to Link, and it almost paid out for him. Also, I want to... <laughs> just, just going way off topic right now, looking over to chat, there's been someone for the past, I like to say, 10, 15 minutes quoting Mr. Brightside. <laughs> and I feel as if that song could kind of encapsulate the Zero Ways pick, in a sense. Because you know the lyrics, coming out of my cage? I feel, I feel like that... <laughs> You know, I feel as if that was a little bit of a of a script change there for him because the link worked out way better than his first pick. I mean, he went from a three stock to a very close last stock, so he came out of his cage and he did just fine, my friend. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Oh, dear. Fan oh, interaction dear. at its best, baby. Yeah, Woo! yeah there you go. Content. <laughs> Was uh in, in in that situation then was the up be out of shield the alibi? Oh no! <laughs> Got into big stands. We're seeing Kanisha's ban out battlefield, waiting for Saint Peter's here. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh oh dear. man, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a good laugh here. We, uh, you know, it, it's it's <laughs> one of those fun. days. We do, we do. You know, it's smash casting. It's what a it's, FGC casting in general is pretty much laid back, right? You poke fun at things. It's a good time. Yeah. 
Yeah, especially in crew battles. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, crew battles is is meant to be one of the more laid back, but also kind of double edged sword in a sense. One of the more competitive modes, uh, or I wouldn't say modes, but uh, kind of kind of <laughs> game states uh, that you would play at tournaments or side games that you play at tournaments. Mainly because, I mean, man, you're with your friends. You're supposed to have fun. And we're in a collegiate setting, ladies and gentlemen. These players are coming here to not only showcase their skills, but to also hone in their skills on other, you would like to say, equally skilled players before they go off into the world of professional Smash Brothers. So, you know, I'm, I'm very glad to see all of these players committing their time tonight to, you know, every player getting themselves a best of three. You know, kind of, kind of practicing, see what, seeing what happens before we actually get into the quote-unquote main event of the season, which is, of course, the playoffs. I mean, my, my absolute favorite character is making an appearance. I think, I think everybody at this point who's heard me cast knows I love to see some Pac-Man. Oh and my! We've got the one and only Ultra Cow, who is. Him and Rando Main, both fantastic Pac-Mans. I mean, what are the chances, right, in a, in a, a small... I, I'd say small. Eight schools is quite large, right? Uh, right. It's more than eight schools now, is it? It's nine or ten. I, I completely just planned the number. I'm going back to the invitational numbers. Um, right. No, it's but, eight. It's eight at the moment. It, okay. No, it is eight. Okay. Uh, I just could have sworn it was nine. But anyway, um, seeing that, I'm mixing Rocket League up. That's what I'm doing. Uh, coming, <laughs> coming out there, Ultra Cow and Rando Man both being fantastic uh, Pac-Man players, and we've seen them have a mirror matchup before, which was the greatest thing. I had so much fun in that game. Uh, and Jean was... playing Lucas, we've got what two Nest players and a Lucas player, uh, right? Which is also, I believe, we've seen the Nest versus Lucas matchup, uh, both very similar but also very different characters. Uh, all of their moves are pretty much named exactly the same thing, but they all have very, very different properties. No, oh, absolutely. But it's, uh, I mean, you're the Pac-Man connoisseur at this point, my man. You can kind of take us through this one. All right. Well, I we mentioned, like... we mentioned players before who who play this character at a at a professional level, but our Pac-Man mains, we see them have uh, a little bit more of a knack for the hand-to-hand -hand combat type stuff. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh. Ultra Ultra has very smart this positioning, and especially his fruit pickup a lot of the time. And yeah, we've we've mentioned we've mentioned a couple names, right? We've we've name dropped like you know Shinji, Kiwi T. Like, oh, really, really good Pac-Man players. Uh, E-King, of course. The old uh, Pac-Man yep. King in Puerto Rico. Um, yeah. And he's, he's a very fun character. Lucas, on the other hand, not, not a character I have too much experience with, like, on a mechanical level. Um, some fun things Pac-Man can definitely do in this setup, though. His Fire Hydrant, I think, is going to be key in a lot of cases. And Z-Dropping, especially the Bell to make openers using that Galaxian ship. I But I'm, it's intriguing watching Carl choose to go for the Blinky uh, and just knock the Fire Hydrant away immediately instead of playing it slow uh, because we are just not seeing it work on Gene. No, not so far. I mean, it's still chip damage in a sense for now. He still got the F smash earlier that did a lot of damage. And look at this, using the Hydrant, combining with the Galaxian. And look at that, a Hydrant coming in. Right into his face. I mean, he, and he still goes for the parry. And uh, still at this point, still throwing up projectiles, moving away from everything. And ooh, that that up smash, that's a, that's a debatable option to say the least. And again, when you're playing against a Pac-Man, an F smash is going to be coming your way no matter what. But a great response with the ledge guard. Just an F smash. We'll do it for the kill. We're back within one stop. Yeah, again, one stop difference. I, like, Jin needs to be able to start putting on some pressure. He's managed to get one stop off of Ultra Cow. But Ultra Cow's zoning is really good at the moment. He's not getting caught out by the PK fires. Look at that little footsie play, right? He's thrown the orange back now. So the fire hydrant only needs one hit, punished off of the edge. And it, right, looking for the fire hydrant. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Down. Right, we got the pack Let's... jump there. Drops oh. the fire hydrant again. I don't know why it's funny to me, but just let's go, Carl. <laughs> the bell Let's go, out. Carl. I, I, you I, can I, do this, Carl. I, I said, I did say that the bell, the Z drop on the bell oh, is super important oh my God. for Ultra Cow <laughs> to set up a kill. And we see it right there. I know no my way. I know my boy Pac Man. <laughs> Let's go, Carl. Uh, Ultra Cow, that man, was amazing. Too stoked. I, I'm, I told you. I told you what was going to happen, and it happened. The script has been read. 
That's a, that was so sick. He places down the hydrant, puts down a bell right in front of the hydrant, uses the, the little water gun that comes out from the hydrant to propel the bell towards his opponent. And of course, with the bell, you get stunned, you get faced with an F smash. Oh my lord, that was amazing. Sometimes Pac-Man's just got to do it to him, and that was one of those cases. <laughs> yeah, no, that that is um, that is like Pac-Man bread and butter, right? If you know how to play Pac-Man, you, you, you know oh, how to cool. set up. You know it works. When it works, it always feels good. That it was, looks cool. Oh, that was that was fun. That was fun to watch. You can do we still got more. Uh, Z-dropping the Galaxian, uh, or the Galaga ship, whatever what you want to call it in there. Uh, you can then pick mm -hmm. it back up as soon as it touches them and throw it, and you can get some combos off of that. Um, right. Yeah, there's there's a lot of funky things you can do. Uh, do you know what the best fruit is for actually uh, as a kill option that isn't the bell and then setting up into a forward smash, but just the raw fruit? No, I couldn't. The, I couldn't the tell The apple much. has the highest knockback multiplier. You told me this. I'm, I and I had something. no clue. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Oh, this one's a little bit better of a matchup, though, believe it or not. Sonic on the board, ladies and gentlemen. Man, you know, I think Sonic's kind of come out a little bit more. I think we're seeing more Sonic. Absolutely. Overall, like, especially recently. I wonder if the movie had anything to do with that. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But, um... Uh, but mm, Sonic, I don't like fun character. Uh, I it, it's interesting, right? Because now it's gonna be a it's gonna be a timing matchup of trying to set up fruit for Ultra Cow playing around Sonic's homing attack, right? Uh, right. There's a few things Ultra Cow needs to watch out for. Uh, some of that being the Sonic shoot uh, shooting Star Kick, which can definitely take priority in a lot of cases, which of course is his down air, which can SD. So a little bit of caution has to be thrown out by Gene. Mhm. Mm I mean, <laughs> with Sonic, I mean, you mentioned recently he's been having a little bit more success. I mean, you got players like 6WX, you have players like Kraftis, like Ken, uh, Sunito, uh, closer to, or uh, Wrath just this weekend, achieving top eight at an S tier. Uh, you also have players like You're Too Slow, or e maybe even Chez, if you're a little bit more familiar with CFL. But I mean, yeah. honestly, in a matchup like this, Sonic, might have a little bit of an edge. Yeah, man, I, mean, I just I, name dropped I, way too many names. No, man. you did. You did. I was, I was waiting. I was waiting. I was waiting for you to be like, oh yeah, and you got like Ken over in Japan. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ken. Very good, good. Good Sonic player. That, that's the only Sonic player I know. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> yeah. Of course. You also got from Puerto Rico Sonics. So you also have Supergirl kills. I could keep going, man. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. You. Uh, you know you're Sonic. I, I guess I do. <laughs> it's good to see. Coming out here, the fire hydrant being hit, looking for the throw. Home attack, good shield, uh -oh. looking to punish it maybe with the fruit. I think there was an attempt to try and get to the bell there, but just could not get there in time. There we go, seeing it switching over. Uh oh. Oh no, the bell into actually an up air. Up air is not going to kill I there. I really like that play coming out from Ultra Cal, throwing it up and actually waiting patiently for uh, Gene to land and actually get hit by the bell. Oh choices. no! Yeah, a, bit of, a bit of an unfortunate play there from the fire hydrant. Using that jump, of course, the pack jump is going to come out. It's going to be absolutely fine. Fantastic recovery from both of these characters, right? Sonic, of course, having his spring jump and Pac-Man having his pack jump. Right. And Still also Sonic in. having one of the best air dodges in the game. And yeah. this, I mean, this is just infamous. Sonic just ha doesn't have a knack for recovery. Not for recovery, I'm sorry. For killing. You saw right there a back air mid stage, one of its one of his more reliable options. Simply didn't kill there at about 120, 130. And uh, of course, F Smash is always gonna do it, but otherwise, Sonic has a really tough time killing nowadays. Yeah, I and I think that's the biggest downside, right? I think if Sonic had more kill options, he'd be infinitely like wider like they have infinitely more wide use and be picked up a lot more by people just in general right but not having a kill option against so many characters is just too detrimental to be considered competitive in a lot of cases the bell just missing out slightly going for the fire hydrant it cancels out bounces too early uh needed to delay it probably throw the fire hydrant down first but now it's a bit of a chase trying to play around it the orange is going to come out he parries it doesn't manage to pick the orange back up so there's an interesting setup that pac-man can do when grabbing the orange in that case because it actually 
would have been able to uh, fast fall and probably get a forwarder depending on how Gene played it out. But wow, Blinky. Yeah, F Smash gonna come out there and not it kind of as a, as a two frame, but also you uh, you also saw Gene go a little bit over the ledge in a sense. And uh, I always get I always get surprised when that side B comes out and he can still input after that. Also, yeah. great Z dropped into F Smash. Oh man, impressive! And the side B he curves away from the ledge, so the Sonic wouldn't actually have any space to actually kill or even connect at all. Man, Carl is popping off right now. Yeah, Carl. I mean, and this is the thing, right? This I we, I don't think we've seen Ultra Cal play anything other than Pac Man. And he's playing it patiently. It's working out for him. A lot of Blinkies coming out. We've been looking forward to see Pinky and Clyde. Not many Inkies, though. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> That's unfortunately going to be a kill. Yeah, he's got the bell set up. Fire Hydrant's there. He's going to Z-drop it once again using the Shield Punish. Look for a short Power Pellet. So... You can speed up grabbing the power pellet with a fire hydrant, and once Pac-Man hits that, the uh, the last pellet on his side B, uh, he actually does gain armor and a massive damage increase. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, so a smart use of the fire hydrant there for a very offensive uh, option. Uh oh, oh my gosh! All right, we we've essentially seen almost a full comeback here. We went from being an entire stock down to now being within thirty percent. Again, Gene, trying to make his way in. We haven't seen too much usage of the homing attack. And even oh my goodness. then, you guys just saw there, every time that he attempts it, it's always a block. And that bell, oh, so detrimental to Gene so far. Car uh, Carl, still setting up here. Actually pulls up the melon. And also the F smash, trying to cover the roll, but it doesn't work. Sonic getting stuck on, on the trampoline. Yeah, still hey, living, though. Hey. Tries to get a pure F smash right off the ledge. A Blinky connecting right now would be game over for Gene. And so he's going to try and get to that bell once again. He Oh, no, he just goes for the oh! key. Wait, did he hit it before? I didn't even see him touch the fire hydrant. I thought he no, just placed it. No, he did throw the key. The key went past the hydrant, and the hydrant ended up killing the Sonic. No, I'm aware, but the key doesn't instantly knock back the hydrant. So at some point, Ultra Cam has to tap that with a jab. Might have been that, yeah. Uh, I completely missed it, but that is, of course, going to be Ultra Cow winning that set and taking his team up to 13 points. Yeah, a huge flip uh, since that first game. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, we saw Ricardo actually take away a win from Canisius, but uh, ever since then, we haven't seen a single player take away a W. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, how many points did you say? Yes. Do, 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 do. 13. I think I'm... 13 points. So 13 to 4 scoreline. This is still very possible. Show and Jazzy G coming up. Two players who we've seen be successful in this league. But uh, let's let's see if they can kind of pull off some magic here. As next up, we have the aforementioned Show versus Joe A, a.k.a. Jarno. We're going to be getting to pick some bands. And I do stand corrected. Uh... Pac-Man, the key does it instantly, does break Fire Hydrant. I thought that the key did 12%, but it actually does 13, which is, uh, it actually does 16, which, uh, you do 13 to knock the Fire Hydrant away. Oh, okay, I see. Uh. Man, I know nothing about Pac-Man, clearly. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Clearly you know nothing about this character that you've been just, just launching straight facts at me for. <laughs> Yeah, clearly you know nothing. <laughs> oh. Oh. I forgot one Gross. fruit interaction. The key fruit. Go, <laughs> go, ba uh, go back to the drawing board, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to the lab again. Back to my pin board and, uh, and ready on. <laughs> uh, kind of looking back at Sho and Jazzy G's performance in the past couple of weeks, uh, Jazzy G has been perfect so far. He has two W's uh, combined D here he has oh my god quiff mass he has pulled in seven stock points for his team and overall 11 points for his team in the past two weeks if i'm not mistaken so i mean again heading into this saint peter's 
riding off the back of, of course, not only Jazzy G, but also Ricardo has been showing up. And Sho, I was about to mention, Sho has a W so far on the season. Uh, only a single one. He ended up getting a single point off of a best of three against Ryan, which he ended up getting uh, reversed to Odin. But in the game that he ended up winning, it was very, very dominant. Four stocks uh, advantage over his opponent, DLS, that we saw early on today, taking away six points. So big maths there, big pointage there, and kind of looks like now Sho trying to keep up his perfect record, his perfect streak so far in this league against Joe A. One of the two Joes on the team, unfortunately, one of the other Joes uh, has not been playing recently, from what I remember. There used uh, to be I two Joes for Canisius. Yes, there was a Joe A and a Joe S. And then when we got to the uh, playoffs for the Invitational, there was just a Joe. So, <laughs> I, I, Who's Joe? I, maybe they fusioned. I, I don't know. But, uh, but Again, was... I, I mentioned before the theory of uh, of there being a mysterious third Joe, Joe M. Okay, that could have also could have just been a whole <laughs> other Joe. Like I have no <laughs> idea. But we're gonna final destination for game number one <laughs> for Joe A. Jano, which I want to say Jano, but uh, maybe that's too many JoJo references. There's a lot of J's in Joe's name though. Uh, playing against show. You already made. Captain. Look, you get one. Okay, like you get three. one JoJo I like reference. Three. I know. I was about to say you've already you've already overgone the quota. I've never even let's, seen let's, JoJo. Let's... I'm just, just really. <laughs> I've never seen you're, JoJo. You're just a, you're just a meme lord. I'm just a meme lord. Apparently, I do love. Some I JoJo I respect memes. it. I uh, respect right, it. We got the Robin playing against Lucina. Ooh, Robin. it's a Fire Emblem classic. Yes, Robin, of course, being the other character. We were talking about Byleth earlier today. Robin being the only other Fire Emblem character not to have a counter. You're right. Oh, man. But, of course, a lot more options in terms of the moveset. And uh, we have projectiles on the board here for a Fire Emblem character. And uh, quite the set of them. 93% yes. so far. Cho, of course, also playing, uh, playing a lot of Lucina. Uh, you, you could almost oh, show. Oh, my Oh How did that goodness. arc fire even hit, man? I, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that F smash! What was that lingering hitbox? Oh my gosh! Uh, and another lingering hitbox! And he is... charges it up again! He's looking for it. Arc fire. He was trying to set up the thunder for sure once again. He it still is, has uh... it charged. Levin Sword. Running out of its use. And uh, oh man. Oh yeah, my no, god, no. Nosferatu! Gonna bring him back to 4%. Nosferatu is one of those moves that people seem to forget that Robin has, and when it comes out, it's always good to see. And <laughs> yeah, Levin Sword is uh, the Levin Sword hits hard. I think I think a lot of people underestimate that. Of course, there's so many options, but I feel like Show just has to play it patiently, wait for Joe to waste all of their resources, right? Because Robin, of course, has well, resources here. Like right. obviously, you got to find your openings, but just constantly trying to smash into their face. Is, is not going to work out for you. You're going to get punished for it. You're going to get hit by L fires. You're going to get hit by Arc Thunders. Or right, Arc you fires. just thought You're going to get hit by Thunders. It's... It, you you kind of need to play it slow. You need to get up in the face and throw a counter out. Just hope that they hit a projectile into you. All right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, we haven't seen too much patience from Sho here, but... We stand corrected. Sho waits for an input, then goes in for the F smash, and that's going to be the kill on ledge. So now we're back to the same stock, second stock here, but of course we have Joe, quite the advantage. Yeah, and Joe having the advantage, there you go, that was a good arc fire into of course of that forward out from the levy sword. And that's unfortunately, we don't actually see the dolphin slash reaching high enough. Coming in, just getting that basic jab coming out. Once again, the Levy Sword getting good percentile overall 48. We are just uh, lapping at this point. Arcfire hitting in the air, good connection. Right. Not going to be able to find it. Bronze Sword is out. There's no Levy. Oh, no, the Levy Sword just finished uh, coming back. Oh, no. Use the jabs there. Oh, man. Tries to get the, uh, the F smash that we saw earlier hit on a lingering hitbox. It does a dash attack. Arc fire taking forever to actually land. It took way longer than I thought it would actually. And uh, and again, Sho just trying to ride the tide at this point, trying to keep things even. If I'm being completely honest, 
because uh, if he doesn't get the stock off quick, I think best case scenario is going to be the consolation one stock difference. I like again, Kanishis has quite the lead. I, I like the lack of uh, congratulations there to Joe for taking two stocks. I was going to say I I don't I guess like might not be. I'm intrigued. I, of course, we don't see many Dancing Blades anyway coming out from Lucina mm -hmm. players. But it's always interesting. I feel like in a matchup where you just need to find those hits and combo off, that throwing Dancing Blades out just to get the touch and then follow up is, is probably the safest way to engage Robin. Mm -hmm. I would like to assume so also. I mean... I think just uh, just Dancing Blade with Lucina in general isn't exactly a great option in most scenarios. And you kind of see that in just the prevalence of Lucina, Marth players in general. They just don't use it too much. But of course, you're going to see it with the Roy. <laughs> oh, of you're going to see <laughs> jab side B. You're going to see just, just raw side Bs off ledge, just, just all of that. But it's not exactly a viable option. It doesn't exactly have that kill power like the other characters. But certainly does have its scenarios, such as uh, landing punishes, uh, just weird neutral interactions where you actually get a spot dodge in. Uh, it's a great spacing option, too, if you just, you know, kind of as a get-off-me type move. Yeah, and, and, but it's, it's also not horrible. In, in this matchup in particular, I think it's an awful move in, like, most general. Like, giving, <laughs> you give a lot of the benefits. Don't think Lucida should be dancing blading. We've seen the Byleth switch, though. So now we've got two Fire Emblem characters and no counters. Hmm, okay. I, I No mean, counters in a Fire Emblem matchup. This I, is like, I like this matchup a lot more for Violet. I'm going to be honest with you. But my concern is the lack of experience coming out from show with Violet compared to Joe's Robin. Uh, Violet, of course, being a uh, very good character. Right. Uh, and it's interesting, though, because now we do have the option of Feonaut to come out, right? Find some good damage. Right. Uh, Ardhar is going to be able to get a bit more damage in, of course, with that Spears range. It's a good disjointed hitbox overall. Uh, the recover's a bit... It's, it's a bit harder to punish Byleth on the recovery, because, like you just saw there, she can just hold low. And unless we want to see Joe engaging in L-Winding, it's, uh, it's a bit more difficult, but... Joe doing a fantastic job at making everything I just said completely irrelevant as he manages to take a stock with 29% taken. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit more dominant. I wouldn't, I mean, <laughs> I already explained this to you before, but I'm not exactly the, the connoisseur of the arts in terms of Byleth, but uh, just just as a, as a neutral standing bystander, uh, I would like to think that Robin has the edge in this matchup. Yeah, I, I, think, I think when we're comparing Robin versus Lucina, then Byleth is or, or or Byleth versus Lucina or sorry versus Robin. Then Byleth has the better chance out of those two, but I still think it favors Robin. Okay. I guess that makes sense. It's a little yeah. bit more heavy hitting in a sense. Well, that and there's more poke, right? Because you've got like better oh, destroyed right. hitboxes, and you've got fail naught. You can kind of play that zoning game a little bit more, especially once you get Robin off the stage. Oh um, no! Well, no, if you're <laughs> if you're not a fan of show, but for show, you got to be kind of a uh, kind of having a deep breath type moment there because you just took away a stock of the nest D. But even then, the immediate response from Canisius. That's already going to be the stock, and now show for St. Peter's on his last. So the other thing about Violet that I think is interesting on Pokemon Stadium, which we're not going to see much of this matchup, but I, I feel like, you know, we're kind of seeing how this goes, and, and not everybody knows that much about Violet. Her side special, the, the spear that we keep seeing, or the lance, or the glaive, or whatever, whatever weapon is actually defined as, uh, will hit those platforms uh, from below uh, on the sweet spot as well. Uh, if you're just standing lower, so you will take, a, uh, I think it's like 20% off of it, which is a incredible punish if somebody is platform camping. Uh, but not Might something we're seeing show throw out too much. Oh, okay. Show brings it back to one last stop, though. Yeah, I mean, that, that, Big that was, uh, yeah, I mean, that very similar, right, to Zero Suit Samus's uh, up smash. Uh, 
by this. Uh, there's a couple of things, I guess. I guess the closest character to Byleth would be Zero Suit, right? Because she's got the grapple. She's got the <laughs> multi-hit up smash. That's, I guess that, that's weird to think about, but in a sense, yes. Like, that's good. That's going to be the game in the set, ladies and gentlemen. Joe A taking that one away. Uh, scooping up, if I'm not mistaken, five points for his team. But I guess you're absolutely right because... Like you mentioned, there there's similarities in their moveset. Not exactly the properties or the movement or anything of the sort, but you mentioned you she has that up smash and that the uppy, I guess, also counts. So I, I, you got a point. Yeah, there's this, you know, there's there's a couple bits there. There's a lot more hits. It is, I I just saw the up B, uh, like, and then was thinking about it after seeing the grapple, and I was like, huh, I've seen another character do this a lot. Oh, Zero Suit. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right, actually. It might actually be the same animation or a very close animation. Right. Yeah. After the stream, we, uh, we're going to do some investigating. Uh, <laughs> we might as well. <laughs> yeah. We're going, we're going into the coin flips again. I believe this is the fifth and final match. Please tell me if I'm incorrect here, Upmind. You are correct. This is our final match, and it is now mathematically impossible for St. Peter's to win over Canisius now. So there you go. The uh, the script has changed, ladies and gentlemen. St. Peter's no longer undefeated. And coming into this final game, ladies and gentlemen, we do have Andrew Riot Rose playing against Jazzy G, who I always want to call DJ Jazzy G. Like they just Yeah, like, that that's a very that's a very <laughs> DJ name. Yeah, right? Like you just yeah. Do, 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 DJ, DJ Jazzy Like, beep, 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 beep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like <it> just... <laughs> sometimes you have internal monologues and you're like, I wonder if anybody else thinks this one. No, I get, I get it. I I'm riding your wave, bro. I get it. <laughs> we vibe in. <laughs> We have similar vibes, bro. Oh, 100%. <laughs> We're seeing Final Destination being banned out by St. Peter's, followed by TNC and Smashville. Dude, nobody wants to go to Animal Crossing. I'm, uh, you hyped for Animal Crossing? Yes, I am. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm My going fiance? to be a, a day one, a day one uh, connoisseur of that game. That's for sure. My, my fiance has not stopped talking about it. Really? For like a year and a half. Really, I don't know how how much you can talk about like different tables. Oh, I don't, dude, I don't, you've not I, met my fiance. <laughs> I man, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, sometimes I do wake up at, at three a.m. Uh, thinking that you know Tom Nook is gonna you know gonna be knocking on my door, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Count, I mean, asking you where his bells are at. Right. But uh, this is also the same woman that has like <laughs> five thousand hours in The Sims. Like really? Just the Sims 4? Oh no, she loves The Sims. Um, I mean, Sims and Animal Crossing, they're, they're pretty similar yeah, games you know, you in you style. In that sense. So I, I have no doubt. This this is why I bought her uh, her own Switch for Christmas. Oh god, uh, yeah. No, you you, you kind of need that at that point because your Switch is going to be used up a lot, my friend. Yeah. Well, here's your own Switch. Um, I need mine. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're just waiting. Mom here. said, <laughs> Mom said, Mom said it's, my it's my turn on the, on the Switch. Switch. <laughs> in terms of your fiance too oh that's uh, golden <laughs> but uh we are we are patiently waiting as we get these players ready i mean like you said it's mathematically impossible for saint peter's to bring it back but we should still have a good game uh and right rose is always fun to see jazzy g also like both these players are very decent I mean, I would, I, yeah, I would like to think so. I mean, we mentioned before that Jazzy G, he does have a half re or a winning record on the season. He's currently perfect with a 2 and 0, uh, beating out Mr. Peyton Nader that we saw early on, on stream and beating out Manhattan's Joseph in uh, week one. So, Jazzy G trying to keep up that perfect streak so far in the season. A great anchor for the team, to say the very least. But Andrew coming in for Canisius, I think this might be a new player. Well, right, right. I'm not mistaken. Yes. No, we've seen right, Rose. No, many no. Time. 
Maybe not. No, Maybe we saw Riot Rose. Oh, only week one, though. We yeah, did not he was summed out week two. Riot Rose and we week him, two. And we saw him the entirety of the Founders Invitational. I get so, you. Okay. So he, he is used to the environment. He's used to the system. Uh, not that I he needs you. to worry about it, because his team has already won the set. Right. But uh, he, less, wants to, he wants to generate more less of a differential for him. Well, absolutely. We're talking about two teams who are, are going to be consistently running up against each other come the end of the season. Because, ladies and gentlemen, like I mentioned before, these are two of our top three teams so far in the season. You have St. Peter's currently at number one and Kanisha's at number three. And after tonight, I think that's going to quickly change. I think Kanisha's might be overtaking St. Peter's very soon. Sienna, I think, won earlier tonight, correct? If uh, they my did memory indeed. serves me. And on the topic yeah, of Sienna, they winning, we, were talking, we were talking about Alas uh, and yes. his Shulk. And okay. Andrew here coming up is the Shulk player for Canisius. And we do see him on that. And we okay. also see everybody's favorite goddess, Valentina. Favorite. Are, is there another goddess in Smash? Least favorite, no. favorite, most hated, most loved? I mean, you're kind of everything when you're the only one, eh? Right, right. You would like to assume. Yeah, uh, but everybody okay. loves to see a good bit of Palutena. Hit those neutral airs. It does your taxes. It does your dishes. It's a great time. <laughs> a multifaceted talent to oh, say the yeah, very least. Absolutely. <laughs> Amazing. And now, very early start now with the Palutena taking on 70%. And oh, I mean, you were about to see that show come in with a wide swinging fair, but just immediately gets denied. With the uh I would like to think that it's a that is a homing attack, but it's it's not that. It's a I would love to hear the term for it because I I can't remember it. Uh, for... The projectile. Pa oh. Palutena. Um... It, it's not a reflector. Oh, because no. that's, it's... It's, it's, on, it's on the tip of my tongue. Oh, it's... It's that one. That one right there. What, oh, what is the um, name of that move? Radical. Oh, uh, auto, like... auto Radical. Auto Radical. Auto Radical. Thank you so much. Oh, I man. Think... We are, we are professionals, right. ladies and gentlemen. We are. We are. Well, yeah, I'm usually the I'm usually the one that's on top of these things with names. Um, no, you're, I mean, you're the encyclopedia. I depend exactly. on you. <laughs> that, that was that was my fault. Of course, you got explosive flame and the warp that we're seeing coming up currently here. Uh, Order Radical was definitely an interesting move. It does lock on, but then it's set after that initial lock on. So if you move fast enough, you can just avoid it. We're seeing the Buster yes. Monado coming out, uh, which we saw a lot coming out from Alas as well. Oh no. Yeah, no, the Buster is able to do a lot of damage, but we don't see too much of that. And the Shield Monado might actually help out Palutena in a uh, in a little weird way here, as those up airs are able to string a lot easier with the Shield Monado. And uh, you guys kind of saw a little bit of that, and now even more damage being put on, and even laddering off of the second attempt midair. Beautiful work. You know, when Palutena up airs, it looks like she's pra like praying. But I don't oh know who God. she'd be praying to because she is the... Pray, pray for herself, just hoping that the... <laughs> that the move... <laughs> Please help myself. Uh... <laughs> Lady Palutena. La Lady Palutena, please assist me. <laughs> oh dear, but coming out, good forward air. I'm liking the patience over... Oh, this is a really, really strong uh, showing coming up from Jazzy G. Again, the neutral air, you'll see it. Like I said, it does everything. Multifaceted. <laughs> Good shield. Patience. Right, jump uh oh. Monado. Jump is the Monado. I don't actually think we saw a single jump Monado earlier when we were watching a last play. And I think that was just no, he, was never put, he was never put into a position where he needed to use jump. I mean, he was, he was pretty... He was pretty in control the entire time, so he didn't exactly need to. And he was also playing against a character who... You know, he, he wouldn't exactly need to have those off-stage interactions. But with Palutena, she tends to live forever off-stage. Or she tends to thrive off of off-stage interactions. So at this yeah. point, Jazzy G. Ooh, this is starting to get scary. Jazzy G certainly doing a good job so far of just staying alive. And look at that. Some teleportation tech, in a sense. Landing on those platforms and immediately teleporting back. There's a little bit of a showcase for us. Yeah, because it does. Don't overuse it. 110 on his opponent. 
it's it's interesting though because when she does that, she doesn't actually she she doesn't teleport. She turns invisible and moves at like an incredible speed. Uh, but right. You can catch her out in it. She's not invincible. Oh really? I'm pretty sure. No, I don't think so. It's it's like it's like a Mewtwo type thing where they it's literally just a teleport. I would like to think. Of course, we could do the research it later, might, but might now, be, all I, I'm I seeing, could be, I could all I'm correct. seeing is a Palutena W on my screen right now. That was correct. Um, no, I I think I am incorrect on that one. I'm trying to think of what character I'm thinking of. It's when she lands. If you're not canceling the landing animation afterwards, that is yes. When she lands, absolutely, yeah. she is, is very vulnerable. But, but we saw we saw a fantastic fantastic tech there coming out like like you touched up on from jazzy g and he was warp cancelling really really well to be able to just keep the momentum going i mean i've been seeing i've been seeing kind of clips you know nowadays because we saw this being a lot more prevalent in smash 4 just teleportation tech using those platforms as kind of a reset for your jumps and that's exactly what we saw because immediately he was just trying to angle that teleportation onto those platforms just so he could immediately get a jump back or just land, reset his animation, re uh, reset his steps just so he could just go for another teleportation. And with his opponent being a Shulk, I don't really know what you could do at that point. It would have to be a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, hard reads at that yeah, point. Yeah, I think hard read is 100% the right word there because it does just come down to catching Palutena out and then punishing for using warp so much. But it's very hard. It's a lot like how Pikachu used to be, right? Back in Smash 4. Uh, with Pikachu's dash attack being able to cancel it on platforms. Uh, that being no longer possible as far as I'm aware in Ultimate. Hmm. Uh, with his quick attack. The, uh, the canceling, uh, platform canceling technique. Pikachu can't do that anymore. So no. Palutena can though. Absolutely. Yeah. No. It's uh. It's more the teleportation characters. Like I yeah. mentioned before. I mean, Mewtwo, Mewtwo, and Palutena, both uh, both being able to do so. I mean, recently I saw a Mewtwo player by the name of Zenkai pull that on bracket, and it was uh, it was pretty shocking to say the least because. Mewtwo in general as a as a character is just not a character that we see too much. But seeing that teleportation play, you know, kind of, you know, in use could also be, you know, in practice used by Palutena. And we go to yet another stage with a couple of platforms, ladies and gentlemen. It's PS2, Pokemon Stadium 2. And more platforms for Palutena. Uh, definitely not going to complain about that, but not Triplats. And Palutena adores Adores Triplats. Gonna be able to go back up there with that jump Monado. I mean- Oh I... my god! We just saw it again! Teleporting yeah. in and out of that platform! Again, and that just goes to show how much Shazzy G understands each- Not not only Palutena herself, but Palutena on different stages, right? Of course, definitely practicing on stage like PS2. It's such a well-played, like, frequently played stage that you'd be absolutely crazy not to. I do not like the shield Monado at all. Right. And now the I, Smash I, Monado comes out, you would think that it would come out at a more opportune position, but he actually places himself in a better position. But the Smash Monado actually runs out, goes for a Speed Monado. Now Jump Monado, making his way back, gets covered with an air. Oh, beautiful Explosive Flame. And that's going to be the kill. 90% on the first stock. And beautiful work so far. Yeah, I mean... Oh my god. The, the muscle memory me. really showing from Jazzy And again, going into that pool, this time working out for him... Uh, it, you do make yourself a lot more, like, susceptible to combos, right? But you're also reducing your knockback, so you're able to get a bit more in. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That uh -oh. could have been massively punishable there if Jazzy got the read with the up smash. Oh, yet another opportunity for a punish, but Jazzy G a little bit late on the punish. And, oh, a counter might have been a misinput of sorts. Now both of these players kind of add it back and forth. We of course do see Jazzy G ahead by a stock, almost lapping Andrew. Oh. All right. Again, and, and this is we almost see. We don't usually see Palutena living to rage, which because uh, she's quite a floaty character. She's quite light. 
Right. Uh oh. Right, auto Back rifle. on it. Oh, with the dash tag. Not now we see Palatina in that rage. Woo! Oh my goodness! Her spike. Beautiful work. <laughs> The purging kick coming out from Palutena oh, there. <laughs> Even more of a showcase of the teleportation skills I mean, going at it. Jazzy G right now just proving how well they understand this character. Oh Speaking out coming Jazzy out from G. Andrew though. He's looking for the short hops, goes for the forward smash. Got to be able to find at least one stop. Really good so far. Only a single hit in there going to connect. Actually had an opportunity for a grab there and you actually saw the attempt. But no movement on the grab, so it didn't actually work out. The teleport coming onto stage, immediately using the explosive flame to catch the landing. This is just great work from Jazzy G so far, as he's just trying to close this one out. 87% on the last stock. And uh, use the teleport again, this time landing on the platform. Auto reticle from super far away, but it still works. Even nice. uses a little bit of Gimmer Tech in the middle. Riot Rose. Oh, okay. The oh, both of them just time. Oh, all right, good. The shield there was perfect, right? Because that up smash did connect. It, it was him. in the sour spot. It wasn't in the sweet spot. But that oh, that's it. Maybe. Oh no, di. What? He does have speed. He had speed, so the the di was good. Okay, I see. I see. Right, now the heat the... doesn't work. Oh, Jump Monado what? Patiently throws out a grab there. There's another he... back throw. He doesn't have. He doesn't have speed this time. Ah, uh, and that's just gonna be it, ladies and gentlemen. The back throw, gonna finish it off. St. Peter's, they do collect themselves a point or two, but, uh, you know, it, it just so happens that Canisius came out to a huge lead in the, you know, in the middle three games. Brett, Carl, Joe A carrying their team to a big victory here. Ricardo and Jazzy G collecting the W's for St. Peter's. As uh, again, we, we saw a great showcase of skills from both sides. Two teams that are surely going to be facing off against each other come playoff time. But for now, we can declare Canisius as our winner. Yeah. And I do you want to go over the overall score? Uh, I believe it was. I don't remember the first stock points. Uh, I, believe overall, I, though, I believe it was 9 to 18 or 18 to 9. Okay. If if the first game was uh, yes it was last stock okay mm -hmm. so if the first game was a last stock Jazzy G was able to collect five points for his team five plus Ricardo's four points off the first game that's gonna be nine and uh, going through Kanishis's points uh, Casey was able uh, able to garner two uh, Brett garnering six Carl with five Joey also with five combining all of that up that's going to be 18 points so Kanishis doubling the score line of St. Peter's in this game to win out 18 to 9. Yeah, I mean, it was a good attempt coming out from St. Peter's there, right? They managed to try and get some points in. They just dipped in between the uh, middle three matches. And I feel like maybe shifting some things around, I think there was some some bad matchups for them. Uh, but in the end, we saw some good matches overall. It was an enjoyable set, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope you've all managed to... Uh, yeah, I hope you've all managed to have a good time. And we will look forward to seeing you tomorrow if people are going to tune in to watch the Rocket League series. And we will see you then. Absolutely, uh, I... ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, sign us off. <laughs> that is us. That is it for us. My name is Upmind, Navic. My name, of course, Where is Navic. You can find me on Twitter at NavicCast. Yes. And Upmind, you can find Upmind at, uh, at Upmind underscore. Yes, there you go. Oh, there you and go of course, top. first of all, before we go, I see Jazzy G in chat. Jazzy G, you did amazing on stream, buddy. You have a great night. Everyone that participated tonight, if you guys are watching, if you guys are fans of the colleges and universities, the institutions that play tonight, we do thank you for joining us. Again, EGFC is going to be dropping the mic for one more night. Of course, tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, you already mentioned we can watch Rocket League, not only on official EGF, but also over to official EGF2. We can watch Rocket League in EGF high school action and, of course, you can follow EGF on our social medias at Official EGF. Did I go through everything? Uh, yeah. Twitter and Twitch at Official EGF. Uh, Instagram at Official Let's EGF. Go. And I think that's about everything. But, ladies and gentlemen, that will be us for the evening. I hope you have a wonderful time. And we will see you tomorrow.